Drakenheim is no more. Struck by a falling star, the city bathed in eldritch fire on that woeful eve. The tumultuous aftermath brought chaos, families torn asunder, and a kingdom shattered. Fifteen years later, monsters stalked the haunted streets of Drakenheim. Caught amidst rival factions struggling to rule the rubble, three unlikely partners venture forth into the crumbling city in search of riches, renown, and revenge. Good evening and welcome back to Drakenheim. This is our weekly Dungeons and Dragons 5th edition live game with the Dungeon Dudes. That's me, your Dungeon Master, Monty Martin. And I'm Kelly McLaughlin, and I'm going to be playing Sebastian Crow, a half-elf shadow sorcerer. And we're joined by our good friends... Jill Denitis, playing Veo Senya, the uh, ranger tabaxi gloom stalker. And Joe Gorman as Pluto Jackson, human battle master. Thank you oh so much for joining us again. Uh, if you're just tuning in for the very first time, uh, Kelly and I post new videos every Thursday on our YouTube channel where we're the Dungeon Dudes. And we cover everything D&D, uh, including advice for Dungeon Masters and some cool guides for players, as well as some pretty clickbaity videos about uh, the most broken spells in D&D 5th edition. So you can <laughs> check those out too. Um, you'll also find prior episodes from this campaign available there for your uh, viewing pleasure. Um, we also are really, really excited to say that for the first time, uh, we have D&D Beyond's new Twitch app integrated into the screen. The, the stream. Ooh, wow. It's Ooh. just become available for all streamers, and so we've uh, launched that in with us. So right up uh, on this side here, this side? Yes, this side of the screen. You should be able to click um, by, by, by mousing over and see the full D&D Beyond character sheets for Sebastian, Veo, and Paluto, including how much damage they've taken, what awful conditions uh, that have been inflicted upon them, and whether or not they're alive or dead. Uh, so you can click through and a new window will open up in D&D Beyond if you want to see their entire character sheet. Um, but that'll always be there for reference. We're still going to have the stat cards coming up on, on the stream itself uh, for those who are tuning in afterwards. And for those of you that might be tuning in to watch uh, episodes afterwards, we're going to have links in the YouTube description of the video to the full character sheet. So if you do want to see everybody's stats, what everybody's playing, uh, you can uh, go over and dive right in and check it out. So with that, let's return to the ruins. When last we left our heroes, they had ventured into the safe haven of Emberwood Village, a small settlement about five miles south of the ruins of Drakenheim City. Once a prospering village on the Champion's Way heading into Drakenheim, Emberwood Village has become a bit of a no-man's land, but a safe haven for travelers, adventurers, and those who would make their fortune in the ruins. And so our heroes ventured there, hoping to rest, resupply, and have some safety uh, further away from the Eckerman Mill where they'd been staying for the past couple weeks. <laughs> <laughs> um, once in Emberwood Village, though, they were rather surprised by the people that they met there. For Sebastian grew up in Emberwood Village and ran into his father, Tobias Crow, who he had not seen in 15 years. After a heartfelt reunion, Sebastian found out that his father has since remarried and had more children. And so the rest of you have been staying in Emberwood Village with uh, Sebastian's new family in a lot of ways. Um, it was a wonderful, lovely time. Uh, and while in Emberwood Village, you have all uh, taken the opportunity to level up and resupply. Uh, so what are some of the things that you picked up in your time in Emberwood Village? Well, I know Veo, uh, being very specific about the food she was going to have afterwards, picked up quite a few rations for the group. Got some candied salmon, which she was really <laughs> excited about. Um, and then when uh, Veo leveled up, she got sharpshooter. So Sweet. Very excited to uh, start to do some major damage when we come across some foes. Uh, Sebastian bought a health potion because seemingly that's, that's very important. And... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> also, a um, I, I bought thieves tools, which is kind of strange, but you know, I I have a history of sneaking into places, and uh, I wanted thieves tools because I'm proficient in them. Uh, for my leveling up, I actually took the feat, uh, what's it called, Elven Accuracy, which allowed me to boost my charisma 
uh, which was very nice. So now I'm even more deadly. And for my spells, I took uh, Mold Earth as, an, as a new cantrip. And I took the Suggestion spell as a second level spell. And that was my level up. Ooh. Uh, for Pluto Jackson, um, it was uh, doubling down, uh, getting some new splint mail uh to from the from because i misspoke last time I, I said it was scale mail and you got splint mail <laughs> well we yeah we knew you guys knew you knew um <laughs> and i clunk around even more uh, <laughs> I, uh and i also picked up for my level uh i went with shield master so i can uh slam people into stuff with my shield <laughs> <laughs> and i look forward to continuing that tradition it's a caspian tradition it was the style at the time. <laughs> <laughs> um, all very exciting goodies, which you already got to use a little bit because at the end of last session, uh, after having done your shopping, running into an old rival of Pluto Jackson's, Lord Jupiter Jones, Damn you, Jupiter. Um, and shopping with Aldor the Immense, the caravan merchant uh, in Emberwood Village, you decided to settle down at the Bark and Buzzard Tavern only to find that it had been overtaken by agents of the Queen's Men bandit gang, including several of the survivors of your last encounter with them in the city ruins, a pair of halflings, a dwarf, and a human man. Um, the unfortunate reality of it is that well, you managed to slay almost, fight off almost a dozen of the Queen's Men, slaying another eight of them, I believe. The halflings and the human got away, including their leader, no. Cora, uh, mm. who managed to all flee into the night. And as you uh, get your bearings, once again, you hear the thumping coming from the cellar of the Bark and Buzzard. What is that? Oh. I do an I return knock. <laughs> <laughs> just shove Pluto aside. Like, no, no, help them out. What's going on? And I open up the cellar. Sebastian's pouring himself a beer. <laughs> <laughs> From the taps? Yeah. So the bark and buzzard has become a bit of a bloodbath right now as the corpses of several slain Queen's men litter the floor and the overturned tables from the bar fight when Paluto threw one at one of them. There's a, a go- one of the men has basically his head caved in in the side of the room. I think four of them were incinerated. <laughs> yeah, there's, and, there's some ash and fire. They might need to do some and sweeping. others uh, were relatively, shall we say, totally peppered with arrows by Veo. Although many did, many did get away. And in the ensuing chaos, you didn't hear the cries of the coming from the cellar in the kitchen. So, Sebastian, you've gone up to the cellar. It's all been ransacked around back here, but you can hear the thumping coming from the, the cellar door. Uh, are you guys with me? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah you were, well, you're knocking on the door back. <laughs> and, uh, so I, I, I open up. Does it open? Is it locked? It looks like se- the cellar door itself has been latched shut, and as well, several of the barrels in the kitchen have been stacked up on top of it. I'm trying to pull it open, but like I'm like, why is it not opening? Pluto, could you give me a hand? And by give me a hand, I mean, could you move these barrels? I do all the work. <laughs> I do all the necessary lifting. Taking the time to drag these heavy <laughs> barrels of grain and water and other provisions aside, you cause deep rents to screech in the floor, but pull them away and open up the cellar door. Upon which you see Karen and Holger Alsberg and the rest of the staff of the Bark and Buzzard, their, their normal barmaid and their two children, all huddled and tied up in the cellar. And it seems like Holger was knocking on the cellar door by headbutting it with his head. So he looks very, very, bl- like blood is kind of streaking down the side of him. Although maybe it's because the Queen's men might have beat him up as well. Good evening, friends. Uh, my name's Sebastian Crow, and I'm here to rescue you. Um, Holger seems a little bit discombobulated by the beating to his head, but Karen recognizes you immediately. <laughs> and she says, Oh, what happened to them? Where are they? Thank you. Uh, mostly dead. Um, 
some of them did flee. Uh, you might need to take the night off to clean. Will you help me out of the cellar? Oh, yes, of course. Pluto. <laughs> I... <laughs> <laughs> like a good servant, <laughs> reach my hand. Come on, I can't. I can't lift them out of the cellar. I want to do like one of those, like just pull her up, just by one arm, just mm. pull her right out. As you're pulling them up, you see the ladder that's been pushed over to the side of the kitchen. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> I knew that was there. We all knew that was there. I'm just pointing back and forth between yeah. it, being like, well, "I'll let him do it." <laughs> and as they they pull them up. A sigh of relief washes over Karen and her children, um, mixed with an expression of horror as they look out into the tap room <laughs> and see the bodies. And she she says, you, you killed them all then. They started it. And most. We killed most of them. Yeah, most. Uh, Holger, rub, rubbing his head, speaks up and says... There's no law in this town. There's no justice but what we make here. Thank you. Of course. You're under our protection. I hope it'll last. This ain't the first time they've tried to do something like this to us. And I don't think it'll be the last. Those Queen's men think they have the run of this town. The hooded lanterns do nothing about it. They say they're supposed to protect us, but <sighs> Holger looks you up, looks at you, Sebastian, and says, "My pa used to say you were a blight and a curse, but you've done right by me and my family." That's all that I wanted to do. You're under our protection now. Hey, that's my thing. <laughs> <laughs> our protection our protection yes all three of us the, the you can call us the three crows <clears throat> jackson five minus two they own the pussycats karen says well whatever that whatever it was that you're calling yourselves you three we thank you but we you should know i think they were doing this to get at you whatever you did made them mighty angry Sorry about the they place. were uh, yeah they were they were in the city trying to hurt children and elderly and I don't think there's there's any place for that here. All right, well, be safe. If they're willing to beat us up, just us normal folks, just to get at you, I'd be worried about what they might do next time. I'd also maybe look in if if you can spare it, maybe hiring a. A guard to help you out? Some some muscle? That's what some of the others do. Across the way, that Mr. Van Dyer, he just pays them. Oh. Mm. Either way, cash out of your pocket, but... What about, uh, we saw the leader run out the back door. Is there any... That woman? Yeah. She's alive then. Yeah, she got away. Mm. Where would she be running off to? Karen kind of mutters. She says, I think I'd heard that the the Queen's men had some sort of pit or hideout somewhere in the spokes. They talk about having a hideout mm -hmm. in the city somewhere, but I've only heard rumors. Yeah, they seem to be wherever... Wherever I've seen them is all around the city. I haven't seen any concentrated area of them, but... We do have that map hmm. of the places that they plan to hit, or... Oh, yeah. yeah. Holger speaks From up again and says, I heard that there's a bunch of them that have a fighting ring somewhere on, in the spokes. Interesting. I might have somebody to... Uh, do they, like, take contests in the fighting ring? That's the rumor. I might have a good candidate for that. Might be one good way to, to okay. get back at them. <laughs> him. If, you get into, if you get into one of their games, who knows what you might be able to, to do. But I'd be careful. Seems like word's out that you're a mark, and if you let some of them go, 
they're going to be after you again for sure. Darn it. Maybe I should stop telling everybody my name. <laughs> <laughs> At least you're not following up with like yeah, an address. <laughs> they didn't know my name before I, I started showing you around, so. Yeah, you've been with us for like mm. less than a week. <laughs> Holger says, look it. If you want to... If you want to stay here, you want to have some drinks, you never have to pay for a drink here. Oh, good. Wow. That's phenomenal. Thank you. Amazing. I'm going to take you up on that a lot. I'll have a nightcap. I'm pretty sure we raided the bodies, right? Yeah. Yeah. Um, There were several, (coughs) aside from their equipment, several coins, and most of them have a few either packs of cards or dice or something to do to gamble with um scrounging a- across what's on their person most of them had a couple gold pieces each um we'll just give it a random roll i'd say between the eight of them that you managed to s- to slay there's about 85 gold pieces hmm. but um a little more than that what about value. the um they all wear the armbands, right? Yeah, the the queen's men usually wear some sort of rose or uh, armband or bandana on on their person to mark their colors. I want to get one. Okay, and I suggest yeah. that we all take, just in case. Okay. To try to disguise ourselves as them. No, that was ugh, you're giving away the plan. <laughs> I, I'll take I thought one. we were discussing. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I take one. You never know who could be listening. Yeah. What if? What if I'm one of them? I'm not one of them. You're confusing <laughs> me. <laughs> I grab one of them as well. And I mean, realistically, if I put one on, it wouldn't be too far from, you know, believable. Okay. You might do better than my minor illusion badge that I keep trying <laughs> to show them. <laughs> We've never used the badge. This must. Be <laughs> I can disguise myself and. Put it on. There we yeah, go. Yeah. What's your next move? Uh, well, we're going to be spending the night again at the Crow family home. And then in the morning, I think we are making our way into the city. Making our way downtown. Uh, so we're going to go back to Sticks, and we're going to try to enter the sewers. Mm-hmm. Okay. You leave the Ellsbergs to clean up the mess of the Bark and Buzzard. They say, and they... Uh, say, hope you come back in a couple days when we got the place cleaned up. I wonder if any of these boys were local. You hear them kind of muttering to each other as they look over at the slain. And you head back through Emberwood Village to the Crow family home. The squat building, which has been built up again, it was the one room, started out as a one room cottage. And Tobias Crows built it up with a nice fence and a cozy oh. barn and two extra rooms to it. Um, your family is concerned to hear the news about what happened at the Bark and Buzzard, but not surprised. Um, Moira makes a hearty and delicious meal yes. of roast chicken and leeks. And the children have many, many more questions for all of you, uh, wanting to see displays of your magic and speed and strength. So they keep you up late into the night once again. Um, But once they're tuckered out, you're able to carry them into their beds and um, bid them good night and actually get a chance, a brief moment of privacy in the small quarters of the crow home. They're so cute. Yes, it's. uh, we should come back here more often. I I didn't think I'd ever feel that way, but... Who could argue with, like, a hay bed and a warm meal? Like, what more could you ask for? It's much better than the mill where we just have the lists of people who have died <laughs> carved on the walls and we sleep. <laughs> a haunting reminder yeah. of It looks of like past past during the day, uh, it looks like Moira, um, Tobias Crow's new wife, went out and spoke to some of uh, her friends in, in the village and ha- has come back with some quilted blankets for all of you. Uh, to to sleep on, so she actually went out and got some some oh. uh, more accoutrements uh, to so sleep on. So it's a little bit more than just a, a pile of hay in the common room that she that she set up for you. Seems like she takes uh, takes keeping her home quite seriously. I wonder if we can request a triple layered bunk bed being built out here. <laughs> that would be nice. Yeah. Um. So what do you guys think? We. Yeah, I mean, we can ask Sticks maybe to. Does he just row back and forth, or he, can he? He 
Yeah. Can he take us to the? You have to catch him on a certain he day. He can get or? us to the sewer entrance, yeah. but uh, you know it's it's a bit further up, so I'll have to get up there first and probably get a rope. But generally, yeah, um, we can get there. So your plan is to bed down for the night. Uh, if you'd like to, you can mark in a long rest. I would like to. I was gonna say. <laughs> and so, to to recap, it seems that your plan of action now is to head back into the city and actually make a, a strike at the inner part of the city. Is that correct? Yeah. Um, Veo mentioned that, uh, or I guess, Veo, you mentioned. Yeah. You have a home base. I do, yes. Which has been taken over. Yeah, by... By harpies. Darn harpies. But uh, yeah, no, that was like my home away from home and or home in home, per se. But yeah, it, it was a great place. I had all my stuff there. There's a lot of stuff I would love to get back, but um, yeah, it definitely would need some help with that. Having having a place to hide out inside of the city walls, yeah. where it's most dangerous, uh, could be very beneficial, especially for all of the tasks at hand. Well, especially since it's above the delirium, and that was the one thing that prevents a lot of people from staying in the city, is that they are mm. in the delirium. So if we can have somewhere that somewhat of a vantage point to get out of that would be best the the memory flashes in your mind uh veo of the uh, vicious harpy leader that uh that ousted you from the clock tower <laughs> that darn red dot <laughs> <laughs> red feathers that's all that's all i remember that's why red is my least favorite color red dot that's what i call her red dot that flies around and taunts me from the from the sky and oh can never get it never <laughs> amazing <laughs> we'll we'll figure that Just out doing like a figure i hope that <laughs> you can somehow shoot that red dot out of the sky and help me reclaim my you have a my yeah, fortress i'll distract it and then you hit it with the bow We'll I, can't, I can throw my my sword at it, but that might be all I can do. We'll see what we can do. Okay. You, know, but I will you have you. taken a troll before, so I mean, I hope Harpy is like no problem for you. No, no problem. You get me in the city, I'll 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 clear the, I'll make it Harpy free since. No, this is a pretty big journey though that you're all proposing. If we take a look at our map, so it sounds like you're gonna head back into the city, um, probably by following up the river. I would assume. Um, almost the entirely the way you came until you get to uh, on our map uh, point eight, um, which is where Styx's ferry was. Mm -hmm. um, you, s you remember Veo that actually all of you remember seeing several sewer entrances there and then taking the sewer at least until you get into the city walls or do you plan to, to take it as far as you possibly can? Because the clock tower is at, uh, is at 12 right in the center of the city. So is your plan to actually take the sewer all the way there? Are the sewers delirium free? You h would have no way of knowing. I guess we'll play it by ear once we're in the city and we see what our situation in the sewers is. Yeah. And uh, we've like it's been a while, I think, since even veo has been inside the city. It's, it's been a bit, and I mean the sewers were not somewhere where I particularly liked going, um, but. It's somewhere where I can generally navigate. So if we are in trouble, the city streets are going to be better. But with the delirium, we're going to have some problems. So I, th I think the idea is to get past the wall and then assess our situation and try to figure out where to go from there. Yeah. Okay. That sounds like a good plan. Um, yeah. The In its day, Drakenheim was well known for its engineering marvels, the sewers being one of them. It has a very complex... Uh, sewer system both for um, draining out all the filth of almost a hundred thousand people uh, and making sure that they have fresh water but of course the the sewage system and the aqueducts were separate systems in their day um, so the way that you're proposing will be through will be through the front of the sewer system I guess the only thing that you can count your lucky stars on is that there hasn't been a large population making use of the sewage the sewer system for about 15 years, so hopefully it's washed its way out. Reduced uh, reduced levels of poop. Reduced 
human waste. But a lot more corpses. <laughs> it's just clogged full of corpses like when you put oh, coffee grounds down the monster hey, fecal matter. We might be able to find rat food. Our companion. <laughs> oh who died. Yeah. Uh he might be in actually. Okay. The next <laughs> we morning find his body. You arise. It's a rather gloomy looking overcast day, as usual. <laughs> for these parts. Um rising early. Um, your father is already making his way for the, uh, getting ready to make for the shop. Moira's prepared a breakfast, and as you head to go, Sebastian, your father, comes to you and says, "Get home safe, son. It's good to have you back in my life, and I don't want you leaving it anytime soon." Thank you, father. I'll uh, I'll make sure to come home again soon. Vale, Pluto, you take care of my son. All right, Papa Carrot Top, we'll do our best. And you take care of your friends. Will do. Um, and yes, the, sir, the and as you uh, pass uh, by, Sybil and Emma, the two young daughters, say, "Bring us back some treasure." <laughs> I'll do my best. I'll find something amazing for you guys. That's my mission. They might have like a very low bar too, so almost anything. It's, it's true. I'll just find them like a rock. I'll bring you back a harpy feather if I can. Ooh. Uh, they look completely beaming at the idea of having feathers. Did you just outdo me with my <laughs> own siblings? <laughs> yeah, she's way better at this oh, than man. you are. <laughs> I'll bring you back a rock from the city streets. It's probably got delirium all over it. It might kill you. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe that's a bad idea. Don't give your siblings delirium. <laughs> Please. Please. Don't worry, I'll give Keep you well the away from children. <laughs> <laughs> Keep out of children. Um, Keep <laughs> <laughs> okay. Setting out, <clears throat> you head the you take the hike along the Champions Road towards Drakenheim again. Approaching Drakenheim by the Champions Way, which was once the most common way for long distance travelers to come into the city. The market gates to the north that you've been, the area where you were around earlier in our adventures mm -hmm. was the most popular entrance for locals. But for people traveling from Illyria or Caspia, you would have come in to Drakenheim through the Champions Road. Um, and the city itself looms large as you walk up the Champions Way. You sc because this is the way. This is the view where the rise of the city cliffs is the most dramatic. You see, essentially, the city out in front of you with the castle rising up on the cliffs, and it's the most imposing view of the castle because you see it right head on rising in the distance as you crest the hill from Emberwood Village. Um, all the the slate rooftops, the broken, uh, whether they're broken or still intact in the distance the walls of Drakenheim, and of course, the many, many spires of the various churches and cathedral, most prominent of which is the Cathedral of St. Vitruvio. And so as you approach Drakenheim from the Champion's Way, the trifecta, like the three crowns of Drakenheim, the old mage tower of the Amethyst Academy, the Cathedral of St. Vitruvio, and Castle Draken, all kind of loom large like points on a crown, and the whole city looks like almost this big thorny crown that's rising up over the, the, the cliff face itself from, from this direction. It's a very imposing uh, sight, made all the more eerie by the fact that the clouds overhead, as you get closer to Drakenheim, they get darker, they take on this purplish sheen, and as you get close to the city, um, a light fog has settled in. There's a, a bit of rain, but once you get close, the rain is largely passed for the day which will be good because you'll be heading down into the sewers and lots of rain in the storm system is not a very good, fun thing to have to deal with. Mm. You approach the outskirts of the spokes, the most expansive part of Drakenheim outside the city walls, as the, f as the old abandoned farmsteads once more give way into tightly packed tenement buildings, little burrows with around churches, old ruined shops, and tumbling down buildings. 
You make your way from the Champion's Way along one of the side streets towards the Duran River to follow it up along the quay so that you can get directly to where Styx keeps the other side of the ferry. And of course, sure enough, after several hours of travel, you come upon the quay where you left Styx last. And the old undead ferryman is sitting there in his boat exactly where you left him last time. (laughs) (laughs) Styx! Did you miss me? How do you two feel about this site? So, Styx, you you been back and forth a lot, or just just hang out here waiting for us? Uh, That's what I thought. <laughs> I as as uncomfortable as this whole place makes me, this is kind of par for the course. So, I accept my undead riverboat ferryman, uh, and pay him in uh, what did we uh, copper? I'll give, I'll give him a copper piece this time. We're gonna, so you can give him some copper, but I, I I owe sticks. Last time, all I had was some some fish bones. It wasn't very much, so I'm gonna give you a whole gold piece. Cause you know what, sticks, we need you to do us a, a a bit of a favor. So, see that? Well, it's a bit far. But when we get closer, we're not gonna go to the dock that we normally go to. But you mind taking us over to a sewer grate? The zombie looks at you with a glassy stare. So I'm going to take that as a yes. Uh. Awesome. (laughs) All right, we're good. I place a smooth round stone in his hand this time. Veil? Stone what? I don't think he can tell the difference between a (laughs) copper piece and a stone that's the same size as a copper piece. The zombie looks down at the stone, sees the flat round stone, and goes, "Ah, ah," and like the sinews of his face try to like curl into a smile as he pulls the stone back and skips it, and it skips four times before landing with a splash in the water. That's good. That was impressive for 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 a, a man of your. Age. Dexterity? Dexterity. <laughs> it looks like one of his fingers also came off with the stone. <laughs> oh no! <laughs> See, now how is he going to row properly? Uh, he'll be fine. I hop in the boat. <laughs> well, you know, I'm glad you trust him as much as I do. Yeah. Uh, he got us across last time without a problem. I. He did. He's he's a great. Listen, if he's Roman. a friend of yours, I'm, I'm good. Even if he's a little um rotting or not rotting. He's just aged. I'm falling apart a bit. He's like a fine wine. <laughs> Interesting. Is this, the best, is this the best he's ever been? <laughs> what was he like a lot? Taking Veo's gold, he c- he begins to row across the Dran River. That's uh, this in his slow and sluggish but steady way. Um, very clearly, straightly bound for his usual pier. <laughs> All right, Pluto. We're gonna need to uh, need you to help him out a little okay, bit, like last so, time. Okay, uh, so I'm I'm looking. So Veo, where's the uh, where's the sewer entrance? I think it's a, a little bit. So I'm gonna take to the right. Okay, so I'm gonna take I guess the the appropriate or I'm trying to think orientation wise, like the left one, and I'm gonna just make sure you get the right orientation. Or think, you're backwards. Orientation. Uh, it's no. no time for jokes. This is a serious matter. <laughs> if, if I go the wrong way, if I do another circle. Because like you're facing backwards, you want to be on this side. Cool. Can I? Can, do I know the right side? Yeah. I like do the wind thing. Which way? Am As. I? As folk, uh, Styx is a very simple man, <laughs> and taking the second oar, you're able to kind of like, as you paddle, kind of pull it further off course, and bef- by the time he notices that it's off course, you're already <laughs> pulling it back off course again, um, and after a short while, the boat crosses the Duran River, and you're about no more than 30 meters from the sewer entrance that you spotted before. Uh, His own pier is quite close to this entrance anyways. Mm -hmm. 
Um, and so you come upon essentially the the Dran River all through the city and up around here has all been built up like a stone pier or key. So the the river banks themselves originally generations ago would have just been marsh, but the people of Drakenheim long ago built up over them and the river banks have been artificially built over. And so they rise up about 10 feet over the water level where you can see periodically there are arches where the sewer main line, the main, the exit points of the sewer are put. And there's several along the way, but this is the largest one that you can see on this, in the, in this area. And it's, the closest, largest one to the city walls. Mm. Now, before we start to go in the sewer, uh, there's a fishing line in the back of the boat. I want to check it and see if there's any catch before we uh, get up there. So I didn't feel any tugging, but you never know. Sadly, there is not. <sighs> in okay. fact, the fishing hook is gone. Oh. <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh. Sorry, sticks. You know, use that gold to pick up some more... Uh, fishing <laughs> materials for yes, next time you make it to the market sticks <laughs> he's got it use a finger it's fine <laughs> <laughs> um or is there anywhere so are we up against the uh the side so as you come to the the sewer entrance here what it looks like is this it looks like a large cave that's been artificially built. So it's an arched entranceway that is in line with the water line. Oh. And so the ca the water goes right, right in, but you can actually see that the water is flowing out from mm -hmm. this, this area. It's a light trickle, but it is flowing away from it. Um, and it goes underground about 10 feet before there's a large grate that's been built into the wall where it's raised above the water level and the drain there's a drainage pipe about five feet wide that has uh, sewer grates built into it that have been smashed to pieces. Um, and so the sewer grate the sewer grating itself is like a portcullis. It's about 20 feet underground pat from the, the water but still above the water line. Make sense? Yeah yeah yeah. Uh, it's we're able to get from the boat. Like, can we move the boat into this kind of tunnel? With some cajoling with Mr. Sticks, yes. <laughs> um, as you come up to the, the water here is kind of this brackish green. You can see the algae collecting in the water above. It's very muddy looking. Um, it flows a little bit, but there's very clearly plant life and algae that's growing up around here. And a fair amount of just dirt and waste. As you approach, it smells, but not like human or animal waste, more like water that's been, like still water that's been left to stay in, in dirt. So it smells like mud, still water, um, and that kind of that musky, humid underground smell. Mm. Is there um is there a bit of a platform before the sewer grate? Or? There is not. Okay. Uh, Do you want to send Pluto? Are you able to get close to that sewer grate and give it a little jiggle? See if we can get in. It's it's been smashed open. Oh, it's smashed open. Yeah. Sorry. Okay. I still jiggle it, <laughs> but yeah, we're gonna get. <laughs> Uh, I jiggle it. I would tell you to go first, but I just want you to be careful with all your armor. If you misstep, you might sink into the river. Clump, 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 clump. Uh, I'll, I'll go first. I ain't scared of no river. <laughs> ah, river! <laughs> okay. You step in through the, through the grate, um, and what are you going to use for a light source? Because there's none down here. <laughs> well, not my eyes like you two. <laughs> um, it's like, oh yeah, we need um, we need light for him. I'll 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 use my uh my my trusty dusty torch. I mean, I do have this orb that we picked up in the rat's nest. What's it do? I don't know. It's a glow. Is it a torch? Might be. Then 
<laughs> it was glowing when we found it. I can't seem to make it glow anymore, but I don't know. I like try to fiddle with that orb a bit. Make an arcana check. Ooh. Twenty. As you palm the orb, you realize that it twists slightly in two different directions, the, almost through an invisible axis in the center. And as you do so, there's a small click, and the orb illuminates. You realize that as you cha- twist it a little bit more, it changes what color it is. Oh. And once you finish twisting it, the orb suddenly rises up out of your hands and floats about two feet away from you in the air. Told you. <laughs> Need a light? <laughs> what color do you set it to? Orange. Okay. To match my hair. <laughs> like a pumpkin orange. Okay. Yeah. So an area of orange light emanates from the glowing orb, and it follows you about floating a little, uh, about five feet away from you at most. Hmm. Can I can I make it float with Pluto rather than me? Fiddling around for a few moments, you catch it, and if you pass it to Pluto and he activates it, it'll fl- follow him. You're going to need this more than me. I, I can see in the dark, and so can Veo. Oh, uh, thanks. If you need a floating torch, there you go. But I uh, want it back in good condition. <laughs> I'm going to try it. Can I, can I, I, I give him, I, I, can I get like the, <laughs> the, the quick start guide? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Use the, I'm going to make it blue though. Okay. Caspian blue. The, the blue, the blue light is quite dark overall. Um, when, it, when it's set to a blue color, it's more of a shadowy illumination rather than full illumination. Um, but it's enough to see by. Okay. Yeah. Helps us a little bit too. Helps us stay hidden. Mm-hmm. Uh, so are we? And then I'm going to start to proceed. Yes, you are through the through the sewer. Okay. So we are now in the sewers of Drakenheim. The sewers here. You walk down a large, long sewer channel. The way that it's been constructed is it's roughly cir- uh, oblong, circular in shape with a long drain tunnel in the middle. So this part of the sewer, as you come through the drainage grate, it opens up to be about 12 feet wide at its widest, and it's a a circular, it's curved up in the ceiling as as well. And then there's a a drainage uh, gully in the middle that's about five feet wide, um, and is slowly, it it slowly kind of... uh, ramping upwards at a very, very slight incline. The gully in the center is roughly four feet deep. Enough that this this whole opening, what when it got to the sewer sewer grate, it would have lined up with it perfectly, but it's actually widening as as you get deeper in. Here and there you can actually see that there as you walk forward, there are uh, holes in the ceiling or the sides of the ceilings where much smaller pipes would drain in, and you can see bits of water leaking down. You can hear the drip, drip, drip. And here and there, you, you'll actually hear um, a longer drain, like of water falling down a, uh, a gutter pipe into the main, the main line here. And then it drains out and goes back out towards the river. As I said before, it doesn't stink like sewage so much as this musky, underground odor of still water and dirt and degraded stone. Um, While there are bits of refuse here and there, um, the water has really ground down most of the sewer, and you can see that the stone in many places has discolored because it's been underwater for so uh, so long without any proper maintenance. And as you go further, um, eventually you come to this um, intersection here where uh, after traveling about 200 feet um, and Veo it's difficult to tell but with your sense of the city you guess that you're right under Temple Road right now okay 
um, because the sewer widens significantly here, and it, it heads off uh, the long way that's uh, heading a away from me um, is heading roughly in the direction of the city walls. Okay. There's a at the edge here. Um, the this is another drain gate that that is draining out to a smaller tunnel about the same size as the one that you came came through. But this very wide channel at the intersection, the depth of the channel in the center is about five feet deep. And then there are the two raised sections on either side of the sewer. Uh, and then it curves up. So the whole thing, if you could look at it like a cross section, it would almost look like a, um, a circle with then kind of this chin attached to it, mm -hmm. right? If you could see the cross section of what the, the tunnel looks like. Again, all throughout here, there are, there are secondary drains that are that have a trickle of water. In one place, there's a bit of blood draining down, what you think might be blood. Um, and once in a while, you do see piles of droppings or refuse um, or a stray limb. <laughs> Anybody I need a hand? <laughs> huh? I, I turn to the group and say, well, it could be worse. It could be. I mean, when I came back to Drakenheim, I, I won't lie, I did not anticipate us traversing the sewer systems mm -hmm. uh, filled with blood drainage and limbs. But here we are, and oddly enough, it doesn't seem that out of place these days. So Yeah, it doesn't phase me, really. Limbs are kind of scattered all around, especially as you start to get into the city. Great. What? Veo, you've you've been in these sewers before since the fall of Drakenheim. Yeah, but I really try to stay out of here because this is probably not my easiest vantage point to get into the city, but it's the easiest way for us to get in. Uh, besides the obvious rat problem that Drakenheim has, which has lost us a few people over our time here, um, mm -hmm. <laughs> what else uses these sewers? Have you seen anything? I really haven't come across other than rattlings and rats but that doesn't mean that there isn't something down here i mean to be honest anything could and if people wanted to find a sneaky way in you never know who you're gonna come across let's remain cautious definitely as always i remain cautious i'm saying that more for me and pluto but <laughs> i pick up the arm <laughs> you have an arm just waving it around i'm adding it to my equipment <laughs> <laughs> just like tie it to like a belt <laughs> just a random I'm, arm uh, I have a plan for this arm it looks like it might have once belonged to a dwarf oh is yeah. there any rings on it hairy arm wristwatch uh, there is a um, plain looking wedding band on it Aww. oh <laughs> that was a <laughs> are you going to take the wedding band oh absolutely okay because I was going to he doesn't need it anymore. It's clearly in the sewers. This is where waste goes. <laughs> yeah, he threw it out. <laughs> One man's waste is another think? man's free wedding ring. Waste? You think he just tossed his arm down? Me like, oh, I don't need this anymore. <laughs> yeah, Listen. maybe he thought that if he wanted a divorce, it was like the fastest way <laughs> to chop his arm off. It wasn't my fault. My arm. <laughs> Anyways. <laughs> okay. But I keep the arm. Who's going to lead the way? I do. Okay. Are you going to Wait. climb up onto the uh, the walkways or take the central um, channel in the middle? So are you going to say take my new armor and walk in four feet of still water <laughs> or walk on the walkways? I didn't say that the channel was full of water. Oh, it's, it's just four not. feet deep. The channel itself is four feet deep. Ooh, okay. But the trickle of water here is, but there's only a trickle of water here. Okay, okay. Um, there, it's very muddy and dusty where it's not muddy. <laughs> um, and so there's that kind of, like, where it's not muddy, it's dusty, but it's pretty much muddy and wet everywhere down here. Mm. But it's not like you're if you're walking in the central channel, you're not trudging through um, four feet of water. In fact, most, most of it is settled sediment um, and the remnants of whatever was carried through here last. Considering how much it's been raining lately, it immediately strikes you as 
odd. What about tracks? Is there obvious tracks that un- in the the channel? There are several sets of tracks. Um, give me a survival check. Fourteen. One four. You can see the signs of what looks like large, round, dragging footprints. Several group, uh, several of them, um, and the footprints of several, what are probably ratlings. Hmm. There's rats in this sewer. What are those big round ones? <laughs> oh no! Maybe it's a rat on stilts. Are the round ones look like they're dragged? <laughs> no, they're lifting themselves. Lifting. Oh. Yep. Like maybe we do stay on the walkway uh, to stay off the. I know that you're going first because you're our muscle, but do you trust your senses down here? Well, if if uh, if one of you guys want to go ahead, I think I should go first. I can be the sure. I can be the loud one. I'd li- I I think I want you to maybe scout. Just yeah. We have a long hallway ahead of us around this corner, and uh, I'm nervous. The grate to our immediate left. Mm-hmm. Is it? Also destroyed, or is it pretty secure? It is, is, it is intact. Um, and looking at it, you can see that at the base of the channel in front of it, it looks like some sort of creature might have dug some sort of nest there at one time oh. out, of, um, out of the sand and mud. Um, possibly, uh, and, and looking down at it, it looks like there's several eggshells broken around over there. Am I able to... A sewer mongoose. Investigate or some sort of... I, I, I want to look at it. and mm-hmm. uh, Do I know what kind of animal it might be? Uh, give me a nature check. Nature. Are you trained in nature? Never, no, I'm not. Okay. You can give me a check, but uh, but it's a long shot. I got a five? A five? <laughs> the only thing that, that they look like at closer inspection is they don't look like bird eggs, but more reptile eggs. Friends, these are not bird eggs. Yeah, they're they're too large to be... <laughs> they're too large for that, and the shells are much thicker. Mm. <laughs> Something else to watch out here for if it's Reptiles. not birds. Perfect. Well, why would, oh, birds, why would birds be in the sewers? Hey. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you really made some excellent conclusions <laughs> with, your, <laughs> with your egg anatomy. Egg and not listen. Egg. I'm just and the, the big thick circular tracks lead to this nest and then lead away. Mm. We either have giant sewer birds <laughs> or possibly reptiles. I walk up uh, beside him to also take a, a look at them as well. And uh, are you proficient in nature? I am okay. <laughs> you can look looking at these uh, 16. These are turtle eggs. Like I said, not birds. Not birds. <laughs> yeah, but t- turtle, turtle, Turtles, turtle. Maybe you never know, especially with these big feet. You mm. know, something to consider. You're welcome. <laughs> Looking at the sewer grate, um, several of the bars have been broken out. Um, and there are several smaller tracks of whatever hatch going out through this grate. Um, you surmise that a rattling or a halfling could almost certainly squeeze through this part of the sewer, the sewer grate. But this would lead, this leads into a smaller drain tunnel that goes um, away from the city walls. Okay. You're welcome to pursue this way if you would li- like to, but it is absolutely in the opposite direction of the city. Let's mark it on our, our sewer map. That we're obviously recording this whole time. <laughs> Are you going to survey the sewers? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, okay. Um, and because uh, maybe this is like a... Uh, in my legend, I write eggs and hole. It's an egg hole. <laughs> egg and egg a hole? hole? Okay. Um, I hope you keep drawing this uh, sewer map so we can show it next week on the stream. <laughs> I accept the challenge. <laughs> uh, let's go... Let's go towards the city, yeah. guys. Yeah. Uh, and I think I'm going to stay. Like, one thing we could do is maybe I'll stay on the opposite side of Veo. So 
Yeah, so and the then that way less intense. And I'll be in the middle. You're gonna go. Are you gonna go down the down, down in the little trench? I'll walk in the mud. Okay. And then that way, if uh, I I hope to keep the illumination just to the one side from uh, the globe. Right. I'm gonna start to go ahead just a little bit to scout, and as I'm going, I walk a couple feet forward, or a couple feet forward, and uh, I want to like kind of observe if there's any more tracks as I go. So I'm trying to slowly go and trying mm. to figure out where the tracks are going, um, knowing that this is the direction towards the city. Sure. There are several more pairs of rat tracks uh, following in the central central gullet, but then about halfway forward, they get back up onto the walkway mm. uh, and they disappear in the stone. And by disappear in the stone, I mean like once they're on the solid stone, there's there's very little trace of them left. Yeah. Okay. Um, hey guys, um, coming up here where the tracks go off, Sebastian, you may want to get out of the center. One thing that you do notice is that when the, as the tracks go off, the amount of mud and dirt in the gullet going forward is significantly less. Like the buildup of all the sediment and dirt was collecting towards the end of the passageway, mm. rather than the uh, the front end of the pa- passageway. Interesting. I follow the footprints off of the okay. middle. Is there a chance that maybe the water runs in reverse somewhere? Like maybe the or maybe all of the water that's draining into the is coming from one of the. The holes. Well, the water would be carrying anything in in the direction towards me, right? Because it's it's because right? it's that so slant, at, right? Yeah, so it's slanted slightly, right? So if it's depo- it, it it's not unreasonable to assume if it's depositing anything like the sand or mud, it would collect over here towards the end rather than being swept away. But it is a conspicuous lack. Let's keep moving. What about the hole right above it? Like the drain holes, the drain the drain holes ra- going forward. There are more drain holes, and uh, bit, bits of water and mud and and droppings are collected in in those areas. Um, there's a few puddles further down the hall the the tunnel. Uh, you'll have to keep going to see more. So keep I going. continue forward, um, da, 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 da. slowly. And again, checking for any signs of footprints in the center, um, mm-hmm. but any signs of life um, along the walls as well. Uh, looking for signs of life along the walls? Uh, yeah, signs of like um, anyone who may have touched the walls or anything that may be out of place in terms of um, this is an area where things settle, so if anything's been disturbed. Uh, sure. Um, you move along looking through it. Um, and everything is pretty solidly constructed going forward. Um, and there's no sort of, like, it's remarkably, it's held up remarkably well. Okay. Yep. But the tracks have stopped. Hmm. Sebastian casually walks up to this corner. Cool. Cool. As I'm like looking on the like ground for you're, tracks, you're being like super, super sneaky and like checking for things. And Sebastian's just like, "I'm gonna go seems look okay. around the corner. It it seems fine here," and I just stroll up. Hopefully, there's no traps. Um, I just stroll ahead and to the corner, and then I kind of like push myself against the wall and look around. I look around the corner to see what's what's going on there. Are you coming up as well? Yeah, yeah. So like meet me or meet him? Uh, put me halfway. Okay, so as you move move forward, Sebastian, you look down. This is a short pipe, goes about twenty feet to the uh, to the south again, before ending in another in, in another drain. This p- pipeline doesn't have any walkways along the side. The gullet just goes straight down, um, and it doesn't look um, there. The gullet down here is completely clean. If I I'm going to drop down, and mm-hmm. if I move forward and kind of peer through this grate, where does it seem to go? Okay. Um, as you move forward, um, <laughs> yeah, 
fast. <laughs> you uh, you walk forward, and all of a sudden, the air right in front of you gets really thick. Um, and you push forward into it, and something's pulling, and there's this sucking noise in the air right in front of you. Um, <laughs> and you are surprised. And I'm going to have you all roll for initiative. Oh, good. You're welcome, guys. <laughs> <laughs> it's what Sebastian does best. It's a giant vacuum. <laughs> guys, there seems to be some sort of passage here. <laughs> it's making a sucking noise. It's probably a Dyson. <sighs> Vea, what did you get? 12. Vea, what did you get? 12. Sebastian, what did you get? 10. Pluto? 14. One four. Do any of you have a passive perception higher than fifteen of fifteen or higher? Okay, you are 14. you are no. all surprised. Oh <laughs> as Sebastian, you walk face first. Into a gelatinous cube. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> oh, look at the cube. Are we put? Yeah, we're putting them in. Should I put uh. them inside? <laughs> Not yet. Oh. You're scared to... <laughs> so you walk right forward. <laughs> okay. So you are sense. because you walked right into it. You are actually immediately subjected to the engulf of the gelatinous cube. Um, and so I need you to make a dexterity saving throw with disadvantage. Oh, you can do it. We believe. We believe. Oh, no. That's a three. That's a three. <laughs> so, Sebastian, you are engulfed by the um, the gelatinous cube immediately. <laughs> and you take ten points of acid damage. Oh. Uh, I try to yell for help, but I think I. Yeah. yeah. And Pluto and they, uh, Pluto can see this because basically, Pluto, you see the air almost shivering and quivering as you realize that this gelatinous cube was almost invisible, hiding in the corner there. Nope, I can't get it. Oh Sorry. no, the the vacuum! It got him. Um, so I'm just floating in this cube. I like walk and I like go to peer in the grate, and then all of a sudden I'm just like floating, and. Uh, yeah, I'm inside of a gelatinous cube. There's a lot of, uh, is there anything else inside of this gelatinous cube? Like now do I notice like a floating <laughs> skeleton next to me? Yeah, the remains of a former ratling. <laughs> so yeah, I don't know if anyone's seen these before, but these are the WizKids gelatinous cube minis, and they are so cool because you can open them up and place the engulfed miniature. <laughs> you, can uh, you can just place Sebastian it. right in there. <laughs> right and then, in there. Uh, it's so perfectly. <laughs> and then there he is. There he is inside of the gelatinous cube uh, dying. <laughs> dying from acid. Yep. Acid death. It burns. I mean... <laughs> are the goggles helping? <laughs> the goggles, they do nothing. Okay. So... <laughs> So, Sebastian, <laughs> it's the cube's turn, uh, oh, and you are going to take um, another 10 acid damage at the start of its turn. Oh, man. And it rolls out into the intersection and lumbers towards um, and lumbers towards Paluto. How far can it move? Uh, it spends its entire action uh, doing that, so it moves, uh, and then it moves one more full... Uh, movement towards Pluto, yeah, and it just is quivering and like, <laughs> as it like it's perfectly contoured to the to the <laughs> inside of the. Uh, oh no! Yeah. Oh no! How how tall is it? It's uh, ten feet tall, so it actually stretches up over the channel. Oh man! I need help, <laughs> Pluto. It's your turn. Uh, so yeah, that that was the the engulf was the surprise. Uh, of the of the cube, then you all go through a turn of being surprised, and then now it's uh, um, Pluto. Uh, can I see? I can see Sebastian, right? Uh, you can see him 
getting horribly dissolved inside this cube. He looks like he is alive. Uh, you can try to reach in and grab him. I'm going to get my, my, my herald out. <laughs> I reach into the cube and I want to grab the closest part of Sebastian. Okay. Because you're reaching down into the channel, give me a strength check with advantage. Uh, 17. You rip Sebastian out of the cube. <laughs> oh my God. I'm, I'm, I, it burns. In the process though, you take seven acid damage. I accept your acid damage and I want to, can I carry, can I carry Sebastian? Uh, can sure. I like, I'll, I'll say that you can move half your speed dragging him away. And I'm going to action surge. And I'm just gonna burst <laughs> down. Like I'm gonna just like like fireman kind of carry him fireman down the him down. like panic running past. <laughs> where are you, where are you carrying? Just me? that way. That just way. as fast as we can, as far as we can <laughs> okay. go. Okay. I'm gonna dash with him. Okay. <laughs> I'm like on your shoulder. My clothes are basically melted. As you try to run away, the uh, cube is gonna lash out at you with its pseudopod because you, I'm gonna say you provoke an opportunity attack. But it only gets an eleven to hit. Yes, I nimbly. <laughs> Veo, it's your turn. I go. Well, it's a good thing that you're safe because let's get out of here. And I turn and I dash. I've. I, I, I... Wait, I also got uh, using my uh, feline agility, <laughs> and that's double. So. Booking it. Yeah. It's like <gasps> 120 feet, I think I can get. Uh, and I kind of like veer leaving? sideways. I'm like, this way. Regroup. And we I start regroup. to like just... run away. I'm like, we're, <laughs> we're out of here. And it's just like almost murdered. The end, actually. <laughs> you're, the, you're asking me while I'm dragging you, what are we just going to run yeah, away? You're, you're like, you're, I'm over your shoulder and you're running. And I'm just like, wait, we're running? <laughs> I had that. <laughs> yeah, you had the whole situation. Uh, the situation control. was under control. I was going to defeat it from the inside. <laughs> uh, it's my turn. I, I'm actually not going to run. I turn. So I, you're uh, running. So like, Polito oh has you over his shoulders, and you're turning around. And I'm what do you on do? his shoulder, yeah, like yeah. slumped over, and I point and I firebolt it. <laughs> okay. Uh, getting a twenty. That hits. Awesome. It's Fire. hard to hit the cube as a broadside, the broadside of a barn. I, I do four damage. <laughs> it takes four fire damage. Take that, foul beast. Okay, back to the top with the cube. No! <laughs> okay, so the cube uh, uh, only has a speed of 15 feet, so it slithers forward. And then um, you see it kind of contract itself inward. And then kind of raise up and put itself on no. the on the side of uh, so it's half in the gullet, half not like it's now turned into a gelatinous L, <laughs> like a, like a Tetris block. Yeah, like a Tetris block, and it slides forward towards you, uh, Paluto. Another fifteen feet. Does it get uh, all the way there? Uh, no, it just gets right up to him. <laughs> uh, oh and so God. that it's used its action and its movement, so that it dashed. So that's all. That's all the cube does. It's right up at you, Paluto. What oh are you going to do? Uh, it, and I'm still holding Sebastian? <laughs> yeah. Oh, my God. Uh, you can set me down. All you hear is that, run away! Run set away! me down and fight! Can I drop him without... Yes, you can. You okay. can set him down. I, I, I'm going to just like let him fall off my shoulder, and I'm going to turn around, and I'm just going to take a, a, a swing at the cube with my sword. <laughs> all right, do it to it. Uh, uh, 20 for 9 damage. Okay. So you slice into the cube and you cut into it like jello. <laughs> and like it just quivers and then the, the, the slice like closes up but a little bit falls away. Would you like to do anything else? I'm going to... Uh, I, I mean, <laughs> do I want to stand my ground against the cube? I'm going to back up another uh, 15 feet. Okay, that will provoke an opportunity attack. I will cube. accept it. 
It gets a 21 to hit. Ow! For four acid damage. Ah! As it lashes out. Kind of like the, the cut that you make splashes back at it. And so you set me down and run past me, and now I'm back face to face with the cube. <laughs> and I'm yelling, run! Run away! <laughs> Because you were squiggling, you were like wiggling too much, yeah. so I couldn't carry you anymore. Veo, it's your turn. So I realized that I'm like way ahead of you, and I'm like, oh crap, these guys need some help. Um, so I um, uh, do Zephyr Strike. So I still want to get away from the cube. And uh, I move back 30 feet so I can see. Okay. Yeah. Um, I take my uh, shot with my longbow against the cube, knowing full well. I'm like, eh. <laughs> let's give them a distraction. <laughs> Thank um, you. <laughs> and let's see. Mm, oh, I get advantage because of the Zephyr Strike. And I get a 21. <laughs> So your arrow hits the the side of the cube, and there's like a it's like a puncture wound, like a like a boil's been lanced, and this jet of acid just goes plash all oh, over the sewer. Oh, yes, no. it's like this that clear gelatin like acid, right? Like it's yeah. it's gross. It's kind of like when a a sore or a wound is like leaking that clear fluid coming out <laughs> of it. It's really gross. And refer that's, to YouTube uh, for more examples. Nine damage. Nice. Good stuff. And then I turn back and run back to where I was. <laughs> okay. Because I'm getting out of there. <laughs> Sebastian, you are in front of the cube again. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> realizing his situation and no longer feeling super confident, uh, he like kind of tumbles into the center and like clamors his way over okay. to this side. Give me an acrobatics check. Oh no, I used too many descriptive words. <laughs> Did you have to cartwheel? <laughs> I get a five. So <laughs> a as you uh, go over the ledge, you trip and slip and land on your face. <laughs> oh no, oh no, guys. Um, um, you can use the rest of your movement to stand up if you want to, but that's all you can do. No, no action. You can still take an action though. Okay. But basically, you slip, you fall, and you spend I, the rest. of I your fall movement face standing. first in the mud. <laughs> yeah, I, I stand up and uh, look around first to see if anybody saw that, and I everybody saw. saw Everyone yeah. saw. Yeah. Every, Even the cube. And then I Especially. I fire another firebolt at the cube. Twelve. Hmm. <laughs> you only need a six to hit a gelatinous oh. cube. <laughs> Hurrah. <laughs> I, I do cube. I do one one solid point of fire damage to that cube. Okay. And the cube slides directly <laughs> forward towards both of you, spending its action to dash. Ah! Uh, sorry, spending its action to engulf. Uh, it, uh, uh, so it moves at speed, right. and both of you can make a dexterity saving throw. Mm, hopefully I do better. Oh, that's that's better. 18. Now, this is a weird question, but can I, using Shield Master, I can add my dex to saving throws, but only when it targets me. Would I be able to use my shield to increase my dex save? Like, if I impose my shield? In shield's... this case, it's trying to, like, it's just, if you impose your shield, it's just going to slither right no, over it. it just goes through yeah, my shield. Yeah. <laughs> well, <laughs> it wouldn't have helped. Okay. <laughs> I got to so you try to do that anyways <laughs> and Sebastian you leap out of the way as the cube engulfs <laughs> as the cube in, uh, um, engulfs Pluto oh no oh. Pluto you take 8 acid damage from being engulfed oh, God. and it is your turn um, can I and at the start of your turn you take another eight acid damage. Oh. Pluto's hurting. Um, can I swing my sword inside the cube? You are restrained while you're in the cube, but you are not prevented from acting. Can I... Uh, you can try to escape. You can, try, you can swing your sword. 
Uh, the only thing is that you're restrained. So you have disadvantage on attack rolls mm. uh, and dexterity saving throws and attack rolls against you have a- advantage. Then I, I got to get out. So I'm going to try to get out of the cube. Okay. Give me a strength check to claw your way out. Uh, a 14. You barely managed to, like, <laughs> you, you slide into the cube, and Sebastian's, like, getting to his feet, and all of a sudden he sees your hand, like, jut forward out of the cube as you pull yourself out <laughs> with a scream and land on the ground right beside him. Imagine just the gel, like, around your face as you're coming I out. guess we shouldn't shut the cube that tight, because we see... The seem... shield did nothing. Um, uh, how to far be getting... can I move? You can move your full speed. Um, You've used your action, but you can move. You can move. I'm no. gonna use. Okay, so I've used my action. I can move. I'm gonna take another hit, right? Yes, that's correct. Oh, okay. I gotta. I gotta do it. So I'm gonna. I'm gonna run into the corner. <laughs> the like cube only corner? gets a seven to hit you with its opportunity attack. Okay. Uh, yeah. And then, can I repost it? Can I throw my sword behind? And repost as it makes an opportunity yeah. attack. Absolutely. Uh, you said, uh, yeah, so I got 16 to hit? Yeah. For, oh, 20 damage. What? <laughs> nice. You carve deeply and like there's the, kind of like this splosh as a, a huge amount of the cube just starts leaking out of the cut in the side of it. And the gelatinous cube is bloodied. <laughs> Acid, is, is, dude. Is, is, it's leaking. Um. And and my final thing is I'm gonna I want a second wind. Okay. <laughs> and then I'm good. I'm hurting, but I'm good. Veo, it's your turn. The cube is <laughs> continues to roll forward and you've now seen Bo- Paluto engulfed by it and you just see this side as he rips his way out of the cube. Uh and Sebastian narrowly dodges his way out, out of it. The two of them are like there's like acid burns all over them, like parts of their clothing, and and his new armor have like corroded in certain places. They're not looking very good. Oh no! Ooh. Okay, Ooh. um, I just turn around. I'm like, guys, run towards me, and I just take my longbow and I take a shot. Okay. Uh, the thirteen hit. That's enough. And I'm hitting that. Did you apply side. sharpshooter to this one? I did not. No. Okay. Um, six damage. Every little bit helps. Gonna kill it. I keep yelling at them, run towards me! Just so you you know, if you want to say sharpshooter is on by default and declare when you're not using it, I'm totally okay with that. Okay, cool. Yeah. Yeah. So for the future. Cool. Yeah, that would, that would be helpful. Definitely. Yeah. Uh. Um, Sebastian, you're up. All right. I'm going to. Once again, I feel like my dodge out of the way was not graceful. Like I'm just rolling in mud and you I'm feel slipping. That way? <laughs> yeah, I'm 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 just falling all over the place. So I like stumble run down this hallway. Okay. And then you can go a lot further than that though if you want to. And then I fire another firebolt behind me. Okay. Uh eleven. Yeah, I, I actually think you guys only miss it on a one. <laughs> And, uh, yeah, I do three more damage. Okay. Fire, 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 fire. Uh, that's the turn for Sebastian. So the gelatinous cube slithers off the deck, and seeing that it's got two potential meals right in front of it, it s- spends its whole turn slithering directly towards both of you. <laughs> oh. How are you going to get out? Uh-oh. <laughs> Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Paluto, you're up, buddy. Uh, I'm going to come up behind the old cube. And I say, um, I was going to do something about a rhombus. No, I'm just going to hit it. I'm just going <laughs> to hit it. <laughs> trying to come up with a clever. Oh, I almost crit. Um, but uh, yeah, I definitely hit for seven more damage. Alrighty, the cube qu- uh, quivers on as as uh, it's leaking from several gashes and punctures in in the sides of it. Veil, vale, you're up. The cube is like right in front of you, right behind you. Yep. Sticks is paddled away. No, so right now, sticks. as you as you look be- back, 
there's the entrance to the sewer um and you're looking at water <laughs> on one side and a cube on the other i'm just gonna give it all i got i'm gonna be like okay and i take my bow out um and i'm yeah you sharpshooter on this one and oh six that's exactly what yeah. you need. It's an AC of six. <laughs> One time I used sharpshooter. I almost don't make it in a cube. Right in front of you. <laughs> it's worth it. Worth it. So, uh, 15 damage. Nice. And I'm just like, you literally see me back against this gray because I'm just like, oh, God. <laughs> Okay, the cube is still going. Veo, how poisonous did you say this water is? Very poisonous, but probably not as poisonous and acidic as that cube. (laughs) Oh, God. Um, What a dilemma. (laughs) I I run to the... So you're right beside the cube, so I I will get an opportunity attack if you move from there, Sebastian. Yeah. I'm going to go ahead and take that opportunity attack. Okay, the cube gets a 13 to hit. I, I use shield. Okay. Ooh. Uh, so I like deflect it with my magical shield, and I run to the entrance, mm-hmm. and I turn around, and I'm going to firebolt it again. Okay. I'm just blasting it with fire. Yes, I hit. Yes. For four more damage. Nice. Okay. As the firebolt uh, strikes into it, uh, the cube uh, quivers some more, and like parts of it are scorched and roasting. But it still <laughs> continues uh, forward. It's March. Se- Sebastian uh, calls out, Pluto, are you okay back there? Yes. Okay. And then I dive into the water. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just like, wait. No. <laughs> okay. The are gelatinous you okay? cube. <laughs> <laughs> the gelatinous cube comes forward towards Veo. <laughs> Engulfing Wait, man. I want to hit it. You get an opportunity. S- Sentinel. Uh oh. Get it. Uh oh. I get a sixteen, and I do thirteen more damage, and its speed is zero. You bisect <laughs> the cube, <laughs> <laughs> splitting it into two gelatinous rectangles, Duh. which pop and melt just as the <laughs> edge of the cube, like. Like this you're, far away from my face. You're you're like tiptoeing on the edge of the water, and the cube's coming right up towards you. And all of a sudden, it just splits in half, and there's this splash of acid and steam, and you just see uh, Paluto lowering his blade on the other side. And all I go is, <laughs> thanks. Hey, where's Sebastian? My head pops up from the water, and I'm like, we had that handled from the start. Good job, good job, guys. I I crawl my way back out of the water. Oh my gosh. Are you poisoned a little bit? Yeah, you crawl up, you stumble forward. I, I stumble forward, like bleeding. You, you, and jump, acid you jumped in the water, eh? Yeah. Give me a constitution check. Oh no. A save? Yeah, a uh, saving throw. 18. Okay, you are not poisoned. Oh, whew. That water wasn't that bad. I it feel was a little disgusting. sick. <laughs> I go into the corner and puke for a while. <laughs> I'm gonna sit down on the edge of the, of the like dangling my feet into the pit, just just taking a moment. <sighs> well, well, so bad. you're you're like resting, and I'm just you just here in the back. I'm like. Bleh, bleh, bleh. I have to say, the humble gelatinous cube might be my favorite monster in D and D. Every time. I'm like, every should time. I use a gelatinous cube? And the answer is always yes. yes. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, I slumped down as well, just to take a breath, because um, I I didn't get any damage, but I'm just like my heart was <laughs> racing. I'm like, wow, that's really scary. <laughs> I feel like you're telling us that you're like, man, that thing didn't touch me, but my heart is racing, and I'm just there. <laughs> we're covered in acid like, we're burns. Just, like, <laughs> Weeping. We were both living inside that cube at one time. It was part of me. There's no part of my armor that didn't touch the cube. Did you notice that like when you try to talk inside of a gelatinous cube, it it, it goes everywhere. <laughs> it it was in everywhere. everywhere. It was in everything. I mean I am I the you know guide of, of the city for you am not above saying that I think we might need 
a little bit of help here because if we just got barely into the sewers and squashed by a mm. gelatinous cube, I don't know how much further we're going to make it on our own. What are you suggesting? Well, remember that time we met that large rattling prince? Hmm. The ghostly three. Yeah. He did say he could help us get through the sewer. I mean, I see your point. A guide might be helpful. We had this covered, but, uh, you know, best to be cautious, right? We have a I lot give you more. side eye. I, I vomit more <laughs> acid. Ah! I'm, I want to. I'm. I can hear you, and I don't agree. I don't. Jeez. I don't. Sebastian doesn't agree with himself either. He just doesn't want to be shamed in front of all of you. So I'll. I. I mean, we have two options. We can continue down these sewers and potentially get squashed by more gelatinous cubes that I didn't know were in the sewers. Or we could try to find an alternative route. I mean, apparently you can just walk into a gelatinous cube and not even know it's there. <laughs> and that's horrifying. And uh, I don't like these sewers as much as I used to, which was already not a lot. So <laughs> Sewers are already not a pleasant place. <laughs> the uh, the remnants of the cube, was there anything else that was in the cube? That Bits of bone that themselves are almost like jelly. Flex of maybe a hand or a foot. And what you can surmise might be the rest of a dwarf. <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh. oh. His I wife is <laughs> probably looking for him. Is my arm still holding up? My second arm. My that, third arm. That, that arm is, it, it, it was safely secured, but it is definitely got some acid burns on okay, it. I'm just going to leave it now. I was going to use it to like set off traps and stuff, no. but I mean, you did a really great job of that. <laughs> uh, that. That's what I do. I help us find traps. Incident. There was an incident in the sewers. <laughs> Another incident. So you want to leave and go find the rat prince and maybe ask him to guide us like he promised? That would be one option if we can convince him to do so. Well, especially with all the rat traps. Uh, can maybe we like, so. can you guys like carry me part of the way so I can rest? Just carry me with you. Okay, last time I carried you, you wiggled out of it. <laughs> so <laughs> I had so fighting to do. Yourself. <laughs> um, Paul, I mean, we do have some potions if, yeah. if you really need it. Uh, we have had our short rest and recuperated our hit points uh, and ready to get back at it. But before we do, Kelly's got a few things to say. Yeah, uh, before we delve back into the ruins again, a uh, big thank you to Axe and Shield for providing us with the awesome gaming accessories we use and to Tabletop Audio for the great ambient music you're hearing. And finally, 100 Years Boar for the amazing narration in our introduction video. If you're enjoying the stream and want to help support our work, check out our Patreon. You can find it by following the links below or at patreon.com slash dungeon underscore dudes. And of course, you can always support us through bits or cheers or all this new Twitch stuff that we're still figuring out. So thank you all so much uh, to our, our new subscribers who have joined us uh, and those who've been cheering us on in chat. Thank you so much. And it's super, super appreciated. Uh, we also want to uh, let you know that um, there's the Dungeons and Dragons team at Wizards of the Coast has teamed up with Adobe. Uh, for this really cool creative challenge for D&D fans uh, to create the next official D&D monster called the Terror of the Undermountain. It's to, uh, to celebrate all the new stuff with uh, Waterdeep, uh, Dungeon of the Mad Mage, and the, the Ruins of the Undermountain. And it's really cool. You can um, download these Photoshop templates and a free demo of Photoshop to create a monster of your own making and then submit it. Um, and if you win the contest, you win $5,000, a chance to meet Wizards of the Coast, as well as the monster that you make will get made into a real D&D monster, including a miniature. Um, but straight up, like, I was just poking around with the templates and, the, and cool stuff in Photoshop. And it's actually, like, a really cool DM tool. That's awesome. Um, because they give you, like, all these bits of, mo like, monster art that you can mix and match together and, and submit to the contest. So uh, it's summontheterror.com uh, for details on that contest. Uh, and check it out because even, it, like, the contest is really, really cool. But the tool itself that they put out is really amazing. And I, I love using Photoshop. It's how we made the maps that you're seeing in, in Drakenheim. So 
it's a really good resource. Like if you if you're a DM running your own game and you haven't taught yourself how to use Photoshop yet, I actually really highly recommend it. And getting a chance to use it for free is a pretty worthwhile opportunity. So check it mm. out. Um, so before the break, we were delving into the sewers of Drakenheim. Where um, Sebastian ran afoul of a gelatinous cube, uh, and had a little bit of headfirst contact uh, <laughs> with uh, said creature, having been pulled from its quivering mass by Paluto, you fled back down the sewers, where Paluto was also engulfed, but managed to rip his way free, and Veo was also. Almost engulfed before Paluto managed Almost. to uh, <laughs> hack the creature apart. <laughs> you sit at the edge of the sewer looking out on the Dran River. Acid burns <laughs> um, and uh, covering your flesh. Sm- uh, smelling of the sewer water. What do you do? Sitting on the edge, can we see sticks at all? Like in the distance, he has rode back towards his pier. You kind of peek peek out around, and he is he's rode back. Not on the other side, on this side. Yeah, but he's righted himself. A creature of habit. I just picture the three of us like just perched, feet dangling <laughs> yeah, towards yeah. the water, <laughs> just like ugh. like having one of those like grown up moments <laughs> where we just coming of age tale. <laughs> Guys, adulting is hard. <laughs> <laughs> so true. Oh, well, okay. How do we get out of here? So, I mean, I could try to climb up and put a rope in so that we don't have to swim all the way around to a dock. I'm still going to have to get in the water a little bit and climb back up, but let's see what I can do. The water stings a little, but not as much as a gelatinous cube. So, yeah. I mean, I guess we can cut our losses. And mm-hmm. I, I want to tie a rope around Veo. And maybe lead her off. That way, if you fall, maybe I can grab you and you won't fall into the water. Yeah, it's not too difficult with a rope for Veo, thanks to your claws, to Mm -hmm. climb along the sewer's edge um, and kind of scuffle back up to the quay. Um, And then the rest of you, can holding the rope in place, Sebastian can take the rope next and the two of you can hold it for (laughs) uh, Paluto to kind of... Uh, climb across the sewage so and, and back up and out again. Okay. Um, so, uh, uh, and so you've resolved to seek out the rat prince. Yeah, he made a promise to us uh, when we, when he thought we were the ghostly three, mm-hmm. uh, that if we came a knocking, he would lead us into the city through the sewers because he knew the way. Uh, at this current moment, it seems like our attempt na- to navigate the sewers by ourselves resulted in near death, and uh, it might be better if we have a rat prince to go first. Mm-hmm. Then he can run into a gelatinous cube, and we can run away. <laughs> and I may be great at navigating the city on top, but the sewers are definitely not my area of expertise, so he might be one that can provide some resources for us. We're going to need to trick him into thinking that we're the ghostly three again. Yeah. Hmm. I'm going to turn off my globe and put it back in my bag. Oh, no. Mm-hmm. That's yeah, I'll, I'll keep you, it. You, you can hang on to it. I don't need it. I'll keep it for now. So at least I can lead you back to the... Uh, um, oh, gosh, what was it? The, the rat's nest? The rat's nest, of course, Um, to to get that same entrance. Hopefully there's nobody hanging out there. Um, but at least we know we can go back in that way. Okay. You do have to lead the group across Knoll Country. Fortunately, Veo, I'm going to have Veo, you can take the lead. Okay. And because you've come this way before with, with them, um, you can all make a stealth check with advantage to slink through the ruins towards the rat's nest. And Paluto, because you are in armor, you just make it normally without advantage. Get a 21. 24. Okay. A 12. Okay. Vale and Sebastian, the two of you are 
able to slip through the back alleys of the, of the sprawl towards the rat's nest. And Veo, um, now that Sebastian knows the direction that he's going, mm-hmm. you're able to take point as you lead across Temple, lead them across Temple Road and through the ruins of the sprawl. And Sebastian is actually finding his feet. Um, and between the two of you, with Sebastian's help, you're able to keep a lookout for Paluto. And he doesn't create as much noise as he usually does, and you're able to steer him away from oncoming danger. At one point, you do run ac- you're do you heading across Temple Road, and you see what looks like a group of almost two dozen gnolls um, uh, setting themselves upon a group of adventurers. And you wisely choose to... Uh, Ex- uh, not lead them towards Spurs. that mess. <laughs> I feel like you talk me out of it. Like I see it, and I'm like, "There's people in trouble," and then you're like, "No, no, 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 no!" And I steer you in the right direction. And I'm just like suckers. <laughs> Pluto, go. <laughs> so uh, you can see notice. on our map that the the rat's nest is up at number six. Um, and so after it takes you about an hour to travel through this part of the city to get to the rat's nest, mm-hmm. but you do make it there safely. You'll recall that the Rat's Nest Tavern uh, was struck by a piece of the meteor, and it just resembles a broken rib cage, splayed open. And so you can still smell the ozone in the air around it, but it's significantly faded since the last time you were here. Mm. You remember that in the basement of the Rat's Nest, where the meteor, where the meteor piece actually hit, the rattlings had broken through and dug a series of dugouts and burrows. How do you plan to navigate that this time? I mean, I more or less remember the way. It wasn't that complex of a system. No, it wasn't. You you can remember the layout. You remember that they had a rel- relatively nasty trap at the base of the entrance. <laughs> um, I really remember. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Uh, I think we like all carefully help Pluto down the ramp at the start. Okay. Um, is there anything that you'd like to do or prepare before you head in? Um, how do you guys want to be ghosts? Well, I need to be not in the light. Um, so I think Pluto, if you prepare your light to be on, because um, I think if we, I'm the shadowy ghost, you're the fire ghost. And you're the chain ghost, so definitely need to make some noise when we do find the rats. Nailed it. Um, I'll I'll like fire off some fire bolts when we see them. Yeah. Uh, why don't I s- stay behind, stay in the darkness? Are you gonna cast your darkness? Uh, once we're past the traps, yes, because I don't want you yeah. wandering into a trap just because you can't <laughs> I see. I can't see. I think also if we, because you're not gonna be able to see, but if you can tie, say, a rope. Uh, around your waist and we can lead you using that rope at least you won't get into the traps but then we can see in the dark so we can lead you in the right way why don't why don't i just hold your hand Pluto? <laughs> yeah i was thinking yeah you hold my hand and i'll just make a lot of noise when we meet the rat prince okay you gotta shake that armor. so <laughs> we're gonna get in there i'm gonna cast darkness on myself and am i you can't see in my darkness i can't see but it, i can be out front in front okay um, and i'll hold I'm Pluto's the shadowy hand ghost and, and he will walk with me in the dark yeah and okay. then make ghost noises. But ultimately, I think when, um, I mean, they're going to have to see our faces eventually. Um, what if we say, because we're ghosts, that we possess some travelers? And that can be kind of like. And then we reveal ourselves in our physical forms of these possessed <laughs> travelers. This form <laughs> will allow you to understand our truth. But. If we were to show you our real form, your <laughs> rat head, head would, explode. would explode. Okay. Okay. <laughs> so, so l- let me get, let me just get this straight. You're going to go down in in, in um, Sebastian's darkness spell. Present yourselves to the Rat Prince, and try to convince him that your humanoid bodies are possessed travelers. Yes, he's met us as the ghostly three, so he already has a certain fear. <laughs> about us so uh, we'll see how this works oh, oh wait i have a better idea i have a better idea <laughs> a <What>? better idea <laughs> that's pretty good I, i'm pretty sure this is the best idea but go <laughs> ahead um i mean humor me uh why don't uh you guys go and you can just illusion the sound of me 
and I'll just stay back. And then once you guys kind of negotiate the the barter, then you can stay dark and hidden. I mean, honestly, it is probably safer for you not to slip and slide around <laughs> down there. So yeah, like if you guys, you know what though, I'll remember, stay near the, I'll stay outside of his. Stay outside, but remember there there was a a an area to the sewer. That went outside of his nest, so mm-hmm. that sewer is outside. So, what if you stay up there? Yeah, could I? It, the, I know what uh, Vera's talking about. Did that lead up to the street or up to the sewer? That led. Um, it was the. It was the other way into his the, nest. There yeah. was another way that led into the sewers. So you'd have to find a manhole cover, open that up, and head down into the sewers again. And start trying to find the back entrance. Mm, I don't know about that. I think okay. maybe just stay up there until we come and get you. I'll although, stay near the entrance. Although then what happens when we reveal ourselves and you're not there? Uh, I was thinking that like, you guys could, you know, ditch the revealing part. I'm going to just take you. At but some maybe, point we'll have to reveal uh, ourselves. Yeah. Okay. Okay, I'll come down. We'll try it. Let's try it. Okay. Plan one. Okay. Plan A. So you cast darkness. Are you going to use sorcery points to cast it? Yes, so okay. I can see through it. So I'm still going to be out in front because he can't see me anyways yeah, in darkness. You stay in front of the darkness. I'll hold Pluto's hand. I, I'm just going to have... No, I'm going to have both hands oh. on your waist. <laughs> oh. Like a conga line. <laughs> okay. And I'm just going to shake. And while I shake, I hope that I make enough So you very carefully head down the slippery, muddy... So remember, the the rat's nest tavern, the the lower level of it, um, is just wreckage um, where where this meteor hit. And there was a breach in the wall that led to a curved burrow that then quickly slid down into the darkness like a slide, at the bottom of which, you remember, was a punji tra- trap of a spiked pit. Mm-hmm. Yes, Working I together and with knowledge of that this is likely to happen, you're able to secure each other, secure a rope, and very carefully navigate your way down this slide to the base. Where, as you get to the bottom, you see a sleeping rattling coiled up at the bottom of the burrow, in the large burrow that le- leads on. Do we recognize him? No, it is not the Rat Prince. Vea? Would you uh, kindly do the honors? I start making ghostly noises. <laughs> and I want to wake him up. Where is your prince? The the rattling uh, s- leaps to her feet um, and screeches out at the top of her, her lungs and says... Um, and uh, leaving her crossbow in, in place begins uh, running uh, co- completely forward and, and because the darkness spell she can't see. Uh, and so she gets up, runs, and collides with the wall of the burrow <laughs> and knocks herself unconscious. We're off to a good start. I was like, okay. Oh. Veo, I meant kill it. I meant kill it. <laughs> Why would we kill it? It could be one leading us down. Oh, no, I totally... To- we're not here to kill anyone. I totally <laughs> thought I was that like, you meant to wake it up and, and no. try to... <laughs> I meant kill it. No, no. no. We're not here uh, to Bea, kill do it. The that... Are we gonna... <laughs> uh, after being unconscious I mean, for a worked. few moments, the rattling gets up again, realizes she can't see, and says, I've gone blind! I've gone blind! Like, no! Little... Rat mother! Or save me! I've gone blind! You're, you're not blind, milady. <laughs> you're him. you're dealing with the ghostly three. Ooh. And I shake. <gasps> you may have heard of us from your prince. Oh, the rat prince spoke of you. Terrible ghosts that came and scourged our people. No! Don't kill me, please. I'll give you cheese. I'll give you food. Okay. I'll give you anything. <laughs> we'll take the cheese and food. It's odd that you separated those two things, but um, <laughs> lead us to your prince. Yes, yes, I'll lead you. And I'm just like, Sebastian, back up. 
back up so she can see what she, she's she, doing. Oh, oh I, I, I take a few steps back so she can see. <gasps> My sight has returned. You're Thank welcome. Thank you. And she reaches it into her side and she she pulls out a wheel of cheese. I grab it. Um, it's <laughs> been it's been wrapped up in, in in cloth. No, um, you can't see me anyways. And it's been nibbled thoroughly. <laughs> um, but yeah, you, you reach out and you, you grab the cheese. Oh. She And she, to her eyes, because you're invisible in the darkness, she just sees the cheese float up and disappear. And she's like, oh, hungry ghost. Hungry ghost. You like cheese? Yes? Yes. Yes. We only eat cheese. Do you cheese have more? <laughs> no. And rats. <laughs> Focus. Take, you, take us to your prince. And cheese. Oh. And the, the the rattling just scurries forward and he goes, follow, yes, ghost, follow, follow. Don't eat me. You eat cheese, not me, you bull, yes? Yes. Agreed. For now. Ching, clunk, 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 clunk. <laughs> oh, the chain goes. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> and um, you you head forward and she she starts screaming out and she says, Prince, 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 they come for you. The ghosts, they come. And and all of a sudden you can see, hear this screeching chorus of rats all singing, no, no, the horrible ghosts. Ooh, <laughs> yes, Ooh. we've come for you. We're famous. <laughs> um. And as they lead you into the chamber where the statue of the rat god is, and you can see that arranged around the rat god have been carved th- this smaller effigies of three ghosts. <laughs> one with a cr- one that has been wrapped in, in foil and lit on fire, <laughs> another that is that has been painted black, and another that is wrapped in chains. <laughs> And um, the the <laughs> this monument pleases me. <laughs> clunk, 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 clunk. And it and it looks like around you the statues of the ghosts, around the statues of the ghosts, they've left like offerings of like animal bones and bits of cheese and coins and pieces of delirium, oh. and like so, several of them have like written small notes that are like in scrawled common that say, "Please don't murder me in my sleep." <laughs> Rat friend, are these offerings for us? Um, and she says, oh, yes, yes, they are offerings to appease the angry ghosts. You are the herald of the rat god, yes? Indeed. And I start taking the gold and delirium <laughs> and like putting it into a bag. I'm just like, here, here, I'll take the deliriums because I can handle yeah, it. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Do you have any more coin? No, no, that is all. We have been making offerings to you in hopes that you would come and kill our enemies and no not eat more us in our coin? sleep. Oh, <laughs> said, we have cheese. Yes, you like cheese? Yes. Fine. The, the shadow ghost loves cheese. The rat prince appears a short while later. Um, and the rat prince stands a good head and a half over all of the other ratlings. Um, almost the size of a man rather than a halfling. And as he steps into the chamber, you can see him shaking <laughs> as he brings a, a bag forward and he drops it in the floor in front of him. And the bag is filled with cheese, sausages, bread, dried fruits, and nuts. And the rat prince says, yes, I have been doing your work, angry ghosts. This appeases you, yes? Yes, yes. Yes, yeah, yeah, good, good, my hum- servant. Yes, <laughs> yeah, and I just start picking up the bag. You can't even focus. Yes, You're just so and, rat- and you hear the rattling. Oh, look how the ghosts devour the ch- it, the darkness of the ghost devours the food. It is the end of all things. It heralds the coming of the rat god. My prince. <laughs> It is the fiery ghost. I, Don't I shoot burn a firebolt out. <laughs> Don't burn me, no! And all the ratlings kind of uh, all crouch down. And you can see that like there's several ratlings are, are coddling smaller giant rats like children. And they're like, don't look, don't look, it'll be okay. <laughs> there's no need for that. You, may, you may rise to your feet. I am a, um, I'm a kind god. Benevolent. Benevolent God. Um, you Guys, prom- what's happening? I don't know, but I'm liking it. Um, you promised us passage into the city. Oh, the time has come. 
Uh, uh, one of the other ratlings said, The ghost has chosen our prince to lead them into the next age. We have taken three bodies and we have decided to possess them. <gasps> and there's a gasp from all the ratlings as they all, all chitter and screech. Our true forms would haunt your dreams for years to come. But we have chosen forms that might be a little more pleasing to look at, if you can handle it. The, the rats quiver in anticipation, and the rat prince says, Reveal your true form to us. Not our true form, our less horrible form. We can handle it. Okay, here's our, here's our, here's our good-to-go form that you're going to be able to handle. You ready? Yes. <laughs> I, I turn off the darkness spell. All the rats scream. Ah, it's horrible. <laughs> horrible human. But I'm like. And I shoot another <laughs> firebolt. <laughs> and they scream. You can't see me. Turn on the light. <laughs> I'm still invisible. <laughs> uh, turn on your. Oh, uh, I turn on the, the globe. And I also give like a. I, I, I stop touching you. <laughs> oh. Um, I was enjoying Put that. on the light, the, the drift globe. And uh, I'll do a. Uh, a shake. Ooh. <laughs> oh. Oh, truly horrible. They take the forms of humans and cats, the ones that catch and kill the rats. Oh. <laughs> they, they're, they're, they're like shaking. Many of the small ratlings are crying. I, I feel a little bad. <laughs> um, like we mean you no harm. You have given us great offerings on this day. We will spare your lives. We, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh thank you thank you great ghosts great ghosts we see that you have taken these bodies yes yes and the rat prince comes forward what do you ask of me in, in, in exchange we have many offerings for you yes yes now these bodies they allow us to travel around where, on the plains of others um, you know above ground but we need your help to, and we need your offering of leading us to the sewers to get into the city. Oh, you will go into the city, yes, where the great shinies are, yes? Yes. Oh, you seek the shinies. We seek them. <gasps> That's why we are pleased with your offering of oh, shinies. The great ghost will seize the shinies, and the rat god will be born again. Oh. <gasps> And all the rats begin to sing uh, a, a really macabre and terrible song in their language. Um, and they, they like are rattling on skin drums and screeching at the top of their lungs. Um, what language uh, is their language? It's like a, a combination of broken common and what and like rat squeaking and hissing. So it's like a chittering like and once in a while, um, you know how like K-pop, inserts a little bit of English into it. Yeah. Imagine rats screeching, and then once in a while, they insert a few, uh, a few words of common. common. <laughs> terrifying. <laughs> Absolutely terrifying. Now, one more thing before we leave. The last time we were here, we did leave a large rock where we happened to uh, put your mother to rest. Do you happen to know where that is? Oh, yes, it's still here. It's still here. Yeah. That's iron that we can use to, uh, I mean, yeah, that's iron. That it is another offering. Yeah. We will protect and guard it. Do you wish to take it now? How heavy is it? <laughs> I, yeah, I, I'm going to. It weighs thousands of pounds. Can you have a group then... of your rats <laughs> deliver it to the mill? <laughs> <laughs> the mill? Oh, the mill. No. Oh, the mill. Take it to Everwood it Village. will grind oh, yeah. down. And it will be the body for the rat god. <gasps> <laughs> sure. Yeah. Um, we might be thinking an alternative, you know, real body for the rat god, but that can help us along the way to getting <gasps> him here. The great rat god will take a body of metal and crush the humans and the cats. That's right. Uh, sure. <laughs> so excited for that. Um, I don't agree on the cats thing. That <laughs> angers me. No cats. No cat killing. <gasps> what about the humans? <laughs> what? 
Cats. Oh, yes, yes. The cats, they will be our slaves. We will catch them instead. Ha <laughs> ha You are wise, ghost. Better than death. The, these shinies you speak of. Can, oh, yes, the purple just, shinies. The purple shinies. What, where are there any more here? Oh, no, no. We give the few bits, but the rest we feed to the young ones. Yes, yes, make them grow. No. You got us. Oh, yes, yes, yes. No. Oh, yes, 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 yes. No, yes. I want those. Oh. The shadowy ghost wants those. The shinies. But what about the young? They need to grow big. Grow big so they may serve the rat god. Give us half. Okay, a half. Half of the oh, shinies. Oh, okay. <laughs> they they look upon you with awe. Um, and the rat prince says, you hear the ghosts. They are the heralds of the rat god. Go and take the great iron to the mill on the hill. There they will build the body for the rat god. Go forth and gather the shinies for the ghosts need the shinies to summon the spirit of the rat god into this world. I will lead them deep and they will find the great shiny. I will lead the ghosts to the true shiny and the rat god will come. The rat god. This is paying off huge. We're, I mean, we're, we have yeah. servants that are gathering us iron. I mean, rats is a good start. And yeah. uh, they're gathering mm. us delirium. The other rats, they do not believe it. They do not believe it. They fight us and kill us. But we will show them. Yes, yes, yes. We will yeah. show the other rats the error of their ways. Yeah, we will. Yeah, we will. They do not believe in the ghosts, but we have seen the true way. The true way of the rat god. We got the craziest rats. Like those are our servants, the cult rats. Hey, hey! If we can, if Aww. we can use this for them to gather us delirium and iron, and, like I mean, we'll use them. It's just like, oh man, we couldn't have got. <laughs> we had to get. So my course. sane rats probably wouldn't help us. So we need the crazies. Yeah, I guess so. Yes. Okay. To help on this journey of getting the rat god lead the way to through the sewers to help find the shiny. Yes. Yes. I show you the way. I show you the way. We must go far south. Yes, yes, yes. Yes. Yes, we must go far. Yes. Yes, yes, yes. I show you the way. There is secret way. Humans very crafty when they build their tunnels and their sewers. But there is other way. We be careful, yes. Yes. Of yeah. course. You trust me, yes. You trust Rat Prince, yes, yes, yes. As long as you don't betray us, you have given us reasons no. to trust. To betray the ghosts is to betray the Rat God. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> totally. <laughs> All right. We trust you now, but don't let that trust be in vain. Okay. Let's go. The rat prince leads you to the back of their burrows into the sewers and leads you through a twisting maze of narrow tunnels and small drainage pipes further and further arcing and twisting their way through the pathways. And he says, I know of but one way through the sewers into the city under the walls. It is but one way. It is secret way. Yes, yes, yes. Yes. Yeah. Uh, uh, can I be keeping a map? Can I be making like a record of this? Of the the turns and the yes, yep, and the and the weaving. Yes, um, you you can. Um, and so the uh, the the nice thing of actually about the sewer tunnels is that while there are small pathways that he leads you on, the sewers of Drakenheim largely follow the main streets and all flow out to them. Right. Um. So the he leads you through this network of smaller tunnels that cl seem to follow closely under that follow closely underground before you actually come back to that long passageway near Temple Road. And you recognize that as he leads you past because you can you see 
you, you think you might be able to tell, oh, maybe that was where that gelatinous cube was. <laughs> um, and he says, the humans build many ways to send their water and their waste out to the city, but it all comes out this way. Yes, yes, yes. And this is the way that we may get in. Yes, yes, yes. You ever seen any uh, big cubes of jelly around here? Oh, they are truly horrible. <laughs> yeah, you're there are me. many yes. of them now. Do you know how to spot them? them? Oh, no, 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 no. The, way, the best way to spot them is you get smaller rat walk ahead of you, and it goes squish, and then melts away, and that's how you know. <laughs> that's a pretty and good we system. We brought some of those with us? Yeah, we brought out a smaller rat. Oh. <laughs> how do you plan to get us past gelatinous cubes? I guess I will have to walk out in front. <laughs> I am the smaller yeah, you're one. the yes. smaller. Oh. <laughs> That's why you're here. But we will reward you greatly for your bravery. Greatly. Okay. And we will try to pull you out if it he, happens. Maybe he leads you through to the probably along the sewer mains of Temple Road until eventually the sewer main comes up to a great sluice gate. The sewer here ends rather abruptly. And whereas before there was drains, what you can see is the it's the wide sewer under Temple Road and it ends at this basically the the gutter that was running in the center has this big stone, iron and wood vertical kind of guillotine like gate that is crashed down. Um, and the, uh, we, we don't need to represent it on the board right now. Yeah. Um, uh, that's okay. Um, the way that it's been built though is it actually raises up as well because the sluice gate is solid wood and iron and it's held up well. You can see bits of it leaking through, but the top part of the sluice gate is actually a portcullis that is quite narrow. And you can see the sewer beyond it. And the sluice gate here, you can see that the that you know how a bathtub has that um top part of it that if you run the bath too long, it stops it from overflowing. You can see that the sluice gate here has been closed shut, but the top part of it is like a portcullis, so that if it overflows, it can flow through. And it's overflowing. So a, a bit of water is running out from the top of the sluice mm. gate over. And so you can see, looking into the sewer beyond, the sluice gate is shut, and the su the water level in the sewer inside is all the way up to the top of the gate, so that maybe looking, like you have to get up on your tippy toes to see this, but there's only maybe about a, f uh, a foot, 18 inches tops of clearance between the water and the top of the sewer main. Um, and the, the rat prints, as you come up to this, you can see carved into the sluice gate are several runes and the royal crest of Drakenheim. Um, and while you can see what looks like um, to be a track on either side of it, the way the, the, it's built, there's no hinges, there's no chain, there's no obvious, like whatever causes this thing to raise up is built into the sides of it so that it offers no purchase. And the gate itself looks like it has been built to withstand a siege weapon. And the Rat Prince says, the humans build this so that none can sneak in when they get attacked. Yes, yes, yes. So how do you get in? I know a secret way. Hmm. Um, and he, um, he, he points to it, and he points to several charred, bones in front of the sluice gate and say you don't walk close to it either or that be you hmm. Hmm. but I know another way and he leads you up back towards the um, where another kind of runoff drain is this one is only about four feet wide it's very small so you have to get down on your hands and knees he points to it and says, we crawl. Yes? Yes. Yes. Sounds phenomenal. Okay. You follow close. Yes, yes, yes. 
Yes. I tell you, there are many monsters this way. You must follow close. You must watch out. There is horrible beasts this way. But we go quick. We be sneaky. Sneaky, sneaky like ghosts, yes. Yeah. You so can do, yes, like ghosts? Uh, um... <laughs> I can do that once more. Um, I'm I'm gonna stay. Uh, uh, yes. Yep. Yep. Yes. 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 And just know that if danger does fall upon us, we're all incredible at dealing with it. We'll protect you. Oh yes, I know. I see. So you crawl forward, the rat prince leading the way. Which of you will follow behind him? I'll go first. I'll go second. And I will hold up the rear. Okay. A few inches of water um, are in this drain tunnel. And you can see f- about 40 feet down the drain tunnel, there is a crack in the pipe. It's a large gash. And you can see an eerie green light illuminating from there. And he says, we go this way. Come, come, come. And he leads you up to the crack in the pipe. The pipe continues on for some distance. In the crack, it opens up into a large cavernous chamber. Something has burrowed through the bedrock here. It is roughly hewn, almost like the claws of a massive animal were carving through the bedrock itself. And it has hewn a rough tunnel that by chance hit this sewer pipe and opened up this this way. The cavern that opens up in front of you is a small uh, V shape. And I'll grab it now. Looks uh, dangerous. This whole city is dangerous. <laughs> That's very true. Um, still, a giant beast that burrowed its way past here. Uh, Do you want to pick up a piece of the sewer? Set change. Yeah, just put that right in front of you, uh, Sebastian. Nice. Cool. Let's take a look at this small little room. Where are we? So see the the hole in the wall to or towards me? Yeah. Right there. Okay. Nope, 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 nope. Right in the middle. Right in the middle. Oh, right yeah. In the middle. Okay. Cool. Let's see if our table cam can work. Yeah, that's cool. Cool. So the little uh, hole there is where the pipe comes from. You see this kind of V-shaped cavernous room of roughly hewn rock. And there's the rat prince. Mm -hmm. (laughs) (laughs) And the rat prince leads you into this room and... Uh, you can see that the glowing in this room is being caused by all this bioluminescent fungus, which has uh, collected and grown up in this in this area. Um, and the rat prince looks looks and points towards the tunnel right in front of you, which burrows off and goes further deep down into the into the darkness. And the rat prince says, "We not go that way." That is where the monster is. Hmm. What? How would you describe the monster? Oh, it's terrible. Its eyes, its eyes, they flash with a light, with a light, a light that just, it gets into your mind and it's so scary. 
Then I run away and I watch as my brothers and sisters get shorn and cut and ripped and torn. It didn't even eat them. It just killed them and went on, 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 on. But that light, that light, very awful. You see the light. You run. You run. The eyes are awful. So we avoid the light. So we just avoid the eyes. Okay, yep. easy, easy. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's... Okay. Any other tips and tricks for down here? We go very, very quick, yes. Let's go. Mm-hmm. Very, very quick. This way, this way. And he points to the south. I've never trusted a rat prince more than right now. Yeah. Oh. What was the th- what was the thing Let's that was actually turn the whole thing? Just rotate it uh the other way, Kelly. Yeah. Yeah, that'll do us good. There was a green glow you said, right? Yeah. From the What was the green glow from? Uh what was the green glow from? It's from the bioluminescent fungus oh, in okay, this room. Okay, the fungus. I actually, I personally don't trust the fungus. Okay. Um, so I'm going to take a, like one of my arm wraps, because I have a couple wraps on my arms, and I actually tie some across my face, so I'm not directly breathing anything in, because I'm not quite sure about that. Sounds I wanna, good. I don't want to glow from the inside. <laughs> okay. I hold my breath. I put my goggles on. <laughs> <laughs> that helps, right? The Rat Prince leads you through this narrow part of the tunnel until you come upon, it raises up just a little bit, you surmise that with the with the it's a little disorienting because you surmise with the curvature of the with the rays of the pipe that you were crawling through and the rays of this rough cavern, mm-hmm. you might actually be slightly above where the sewers are. Um but also quite close probably to where the city walls are. And it's not long before you come towards this the end of this passage, only about twenty feet down from the sewer pipe, is a breach in a masonry wall that is, that is made out of stonework that is identical to the walls of Drakenheim. It opens up into a large chamber, uh, into a large hallway that is about the thickness of the city walls of Drakenheim. And looking up in the arch wor- wor- working o- overward, overhead, it looks like you might be in the foundations of the walls or the buildings around Temple Gate. Um, and the, however, the ceiling mm. here has entirely collapsed. Mm. Whatever cracked through the wall here caused a massive cave-in. And the rough dirt and sediment um, and what would look like the, the filler concrete of the city walls above have collapsed down to fill this hallway and what you can see is that at the south uh, at the end of the hall so there's the rounded end of the hallway and you can see that there's a storage room off to the side and then the stonework has collapsed in front of this large iron bound door Um, and then at the south end of the hallway there's another doorway as well a wooden doorway um, that leads to a short hallway that ends in a... Uh, sorry, it's it's actually not a doorway at the, that end. It's a uh, portcullis. It's like a, a, a prison-style portcullis gate. Mm. And then to the north end, you can see that there is what remains of a staircase that was coming down this way, but it's into- but the, the crack in the ceiling has caused the top edge of, edge of the stairway to collapse down in here as well. Mm. So we can surmise that we're at kind of the bottom of the uh, the wall, Under but the on wall? the inside. Perhaps, yes. Okay. Mm. Yep. The door right in front of you um, looks like someone was trying to push it or batter it from the inside, um, and it's it hangs uh, slightly, like it's like kind of buckled out from the in, in inside. Mm. Um, as if it opens towards the rubble, but someone was pushing on it and 
Oh, uh, was trapped. trapped by the rubble <laughs> on the other side. Is it how much? How much rubble? Like, is it? pretty big can i start to shift some of this rubble away you can and looking over there's actually the the supply room over there is filled with shovels pickaxes and all sorts of artisans tools pretty much er uh, enough that you could given a fair amount of work you could probably clear it clear uh enough to clear the door i'm excited because i didn't know if this would actually ever come in handy but mold earth allows me to move loose <laughs> rubble in a five foot cube. I did it, guys. We're clapping for your cantrip. <laughs> I used a cantrip. I was going to say, I, I thought we were going to have to do some dwarves work and get the pickaxes. No, in I there. actually, like, I lean up against the wall and I'm just, like, sitting there staring at it as, like, piles of rubble are being shifted away from in front of the door. And I'm just like, yeah, guys, just relax. I got this. Just give me a few minutes. <laughs> I should have used the dwarf's arm. I should have kept the dwarf's arm. <laughs> Made it do all the work, but this works. Okay, so uh, you can pull the the bit of rubble out of the way, um, nice. and you you move it um, out of the way, and the, it looks like the door could be open now. And it opens towards us. Yeah, you'd pull it open. Yeah. I just asked the rat uh, prince, "Do you know what's on the other side of the door?" No, no, no! You waste your time. The way is this way, and he points towards the uh, the prison, the prison style gate that leads off into another room that you can see. You can see it in the darkness. It looks like another uh, another room, and from here, the angle you can kind of make out a. Uh, the, it looks like there might be a wooden table set up in the middle of it, um, and uh, you can hear kind of this creaking, sort of lurching mechanical sound coming from the room to the south. You waited an entire minute to tell me that we didn't need to go through this door. I've been moving. No, I told you there was a way to the south. <laughs> Rat Prince, you you'll you'll have to forgive us, but uh, we're interested in doors. And I just spent a lot of time moving this. Oh, earth. ghosts are very strange creatures. <laughs> I'm just gonna take a look. Actually, I wait here. Yes, if monster comes from the other way, I warn you. Uh, that'd be actually fantastic. Wait, can can you guarantee that there are no monsters? When we go your way? No. Ooh. <laughs> monsters, <laughs> monsters. You keep on but the probably lookout. not. I think monster go, big monster, big eye monster with the lights that flash, flash, flash in all my brain. I think it lives other way. It not come this way this much. Okay. It hmm. not find too much food in here. Okay. Who wants to open the door? I got it. Are you door. turning on the gr the drift globe again? Uh, can you see? It's yeah, because right? yeah, because otherwise there's no light. Okay, yes, I okay. do. I do that, and then can I command the drift globe to when I open the door? Actually, yeah, I'll start with the door. I'm gonna open the door. Okay, you open the door. Let's just slide everything towards me this way, so that our good folks on stream can see the next room. Full of gnolls. Treasure. Monsters, demons. Knoll treasure. Something demons. Something scary. Whatever. Yeah, it's obviously something was trying to escape, and we're just like... <laughs> doo, doo, doo. Thank you, Sebastian. <laughs> How about that mold earth? Okay. Mold earth. So. Great. Mold earth. Here's what you and see. I'm Scully. And Veo's... You open up guy. this door, <laughs> the smoking man, and you see what looks like a common, a large common room. It has several barrels and boxes stacked against the walls, and on the other side of the door, as you open it up, you can see several bloody gashes and gouges of someone pounded on it from the other side with their fists until they hammered their fists into a bloody pulp. Um, trying to get it open from the other side. There is splatters of dried blood all on the hallway in front of you. And looking up, as you look into the room and the table in front of you, you see a grisly sight indeed. On the table, on a spike, is a man's head impaled on what looks like the end of a broomstick. And then it's been pounded through the table and left in the middle. And the head is trying to speak. It's say, it's mumbling something under its breath. It's moving. Its lips are moving. It's, 
You can see that it's, it's long, wispy beard falling out of it, and it looks like part of its head has been cracked open, and and whatever matter is inside of it has been uh, chewed at as well. Again, it's not rotting because bodies don't rot in this part of Drakenheim, um, but it's very clearly dismembered because the rest of its body is parts of it are all over the place but it's just bone because surrounding the the head gnawing on the bones and yelling at it are three emaciated men they look almost uh like the bone the skin and bone is clinging tightly that they almost look skeletal and as they look up at you, as the light opens up, you can see their sunken eyes are bruised around their faces. And one of them is gnawing on one of the bones. Uh, and you can see that the bone that's in his mouth has been like chewed almost right down to the marrow repeatedly. Um, and they look up at the light at you and they hiss. And you can see these the, their tongues have elongated and their hands they have chewed their hands and fingertips into long claws and they look at you and they just scream close the door close the door (laughs) (laughs) and i will have you you all roll for initiative please (laughs) oops (laughs) my mistake (laughs) pardon me Pluto? 20. Fail? 20. Which way we would like to go first? You can go first. Yeah. Uh, Sebastian? 11. Do you think? Fail, if you, if you would do your thing. Fail, <laughs> you recognize what's happened to these men. They have become ghouls, one of your favorite enemies. Oh, Should have seen that one coming. You, li- you like these things? No. <laughs> I like to kill them. Ooh. Ooh. <laughs> So a veil, Pluto, the ghouls, then Sebastian. Um, and as they, uh, um, they, they scream out and they say, meat, finally, finally, Traver, there's meat. And Veo, it's your turn. Uh, I take my bow and I say, not today, not this meat. And I fire the bow uh, at the closest one. Oh, crit. <laughs> and she crits. Oh, she crit. um, I'm just going to flick him. <laughs> just, <laughs> yeah. Are, are you going right behind me? Uh, Yeah, slightly over. Shoot over but the then old, I'm going to move back out of the way afterwards. The old shoulder shot. So. Nice crit. Thank you. Um, so I got two d8s because of my dread ambusher. So that's thirty six damage. <laughs> 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 because of sharpshooter. Okay. Of course. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. You get him execution style. <laughs> what happens? Oh, I want to. I aim right for his neck, so that way, hopefully, it severs through it and severs his head off his body right through the spine. It pull the critical shot pulls out pieces <sighs> of the ghoul's spine that clatter along the floor, and it drops yes. to the ground, dead completely. All nice right. shot. And I take my second shot. And I get a 19 to hit. That hits. And I'm going to go for the one on the right. Okay. And that is a 19 damage. <sighs> oh, it is very bloody. <laughs> and then I scoot back out of the way to let room for my comrades. Okay. And I say, your turn. Pluto, you're up. Uh oh man. <laughs> nice nice shot, Veo. Uh thank you. I'm 
I'm gonna stand in the uh, in the hallway, mm-hmm. and I'm gonna give give them like I'm gonna slam my shield and sword together. And I'm like, nice to meet you. <laughs> All right. And I'm just gonna stand my ground. Okay, the two ghouls that survive. Oh, I'm gonna ready an action. Can, okay. Sorry, can I ready? A, is if one comes in range, I'm just gonna whack it. You bet. You bet. The unwounded one rushes at you, uh, bounding forward. It's uh, and getting right right up to you. Make your attack. Would you take a fort? No, wait, no. Fifteen. I take it. Yes. Uh, it runs up to you and is impaled on your blade. Uh, for seven damage. Seven damage. As it does so, it pushes itself further on your blade and claws right at your face, Paluto. Oh, my face! I put <laughs> my helmet. It gets a mighty eight to hit. Okay, and then I'm going to repost that. Uh, you've already used your reaction. Oh, okay. Yeah, the ready to action was oh, okay. your reaction. The other one rushes towards you as well, ah! leaping forward to attack, getting a 19 to hit. That ties. All righty, it hits you with its claws. And they bite deep into the flesh around your neck, and you take nine points of damage. And I need you to give me a constitution saving throw as you feel this bitter chill seeping through your entire body. Uh, a one plus... <laughs> I got a six. Pluto, you drop to the ground paralyzed. <gasps> <laughs> that's, that's... Sebastian, no rebuttal. we are over to you and the ghouls eye you with hungry eyes like they're going to dive into you at any moment Sebastian <laughs> finally stops leaning on the wall mm-hmm. and is like oh no there's enemies and um, I come up and I, I stand over Pluto as is customary for when he gets knocked down <laughs> and I do the same thing I always do which is I'm going to burning hands Okay, so I'm going to say you can definitely aim the flames over Pluto because he's laying on the ground. So you fire the flames and it gets both the ghouls, both of whom succeed their saving throws. Ah, nuts. Ah, nuts. So they (laughs) leap backwards, denied their next meal to dodge the burning flames. They still take a bit. 12 damage. So that, although one... Uh, leaps backwards, it's not enough to save it, and it it is still caught in the flames and expires. The other is bloodied. Yes. Bleed. And burned. Bloodied and burned. You go to the top of the round with Vale. I'm going to back up. or No, actually, I'm going to stay on top of... Mm. Yeah, I'm going to peek back in, take my shot, and say, it's time for you to become ground beef. And I get a 14. That hits. Nice. Uh, 15 damage. What happens? Oh, I... I am you cleaned up this right, <laughs> just just wrecking. I am right for the jaw because I'm like right in the in the food hole. It like howls out at you and <laughs> yeah. Right with my well. Bow. They are destroyed. You see the severed head in the center still whispering, mumbling on some words. Pluto, you okay? I do not respond. <laughs> uh, Pluto, roll the saving throw. <laughs> Constitution. Okay, there we go. You come to about 10 seconds later, the paralysis having seeped out of your body. <gasps> smack your face a couple times just to wake you up a little bit. I'm up, like, I'm up. Up, up. <laughs> after, after you wake up, I bend down and I start smacking your face. <laughs> guys, guys, okay, okay, I got it. Veo, Sebastian, thank you. What, were you scared? <sighs> I just... So scared that you you dropped, man. You Not being fainted. able to. I <laughs> had a momentary lapse in movement earlier today you were inside a gelatinous cube then you get bit by one monster and you fall down i uh, and just give up 
joking. What are we going to tell his friends and, and family that he fainted when he got across yeah, a yeah. ghoul? I killed oh. a troll, but when a ghoul bites me, I fall down and die. <laughs> anyway. You guys seem to just forget the whole Jalat and his cube encounter <laughs> completely. Let's see what this head um, has to say. I walk up to the head and I listen. The head, as you get closer, it says, <gasps> You moron! Don't pull the iron lever first! I look around the room for an iron lever. You moron! You don't pull the iron lever last! Didn't say first, said last. I'm con- oh, okay, no. Yeah. Sorry, uh, I misspoke. I look, I look around the room for an iron lever. lever. There's none to be seen. Does... Do I see a body anywhere, or is that the bones? It's what remains of his body. Okay. And as you look around, you hear him shout out again. Pull the copper! Flip the brass! I, I'm going to investigate the door from this side. Mm-hmm. Okay. Um, he, uh, the door on the other side, looks like they clawed into it as hard as they possibly could uh, to escape, but they couldn't get out. Judging by the amount of masonry that um, Sebastian had to move, it would have taken a lot of work to get out from the other side. But I see no and, levers. And, and anyway. looking around the room, like they, th- this room has been appointed as what probably what was a mess room. Like there's a bit, there's some food, but there aren't any tools or anything that you could use to really break down the door. The men, it looks like, judging most of their clothes have rotted away. But what remains of them, uh, it, it looks like they might have been sewer workers. And it was, uh, don't pull the iron le- lever last. last. Pull the copper one first. Pull the copper, flip the brass. Um, okay. Is he saying anything else? No, he just continues to repeat. Pull the copper, flip the brass, don't pull the iron lever last. Okay. Haunting. I walk over to this door and listen up to it. Um, most of this door has been broken away, and you push it open, and it's a pantry, and all the food has been eaten. But no levers. No. Mm. Uh, I'm going to check out this door because I'm really good at opening doors. And within this door are four pallet-style beds that don't look like they've been slept in in ages. Several of them are broken, but so nothing else three goals the- and the one beheaded, the, the, the severed head. That's the four, right? Hmm. Yeah. What about the uh, supplies? Yeah. Looking around on the bones on the floor, you can see that um, there's one, there's a, an insignia on the rema- remnants of the clothing around it that, sa- that says, FAS, City Engineer. Now, maybe this has something to do with the other room that the rat prince wanted us to go to. Maybe, definitely. Because maybe the, these guys just got, got trapped in here. Potentially. We'll keep an eye out if there's any anything that comes along. Keep going with the rat prints. And it's totally dark in here, right? Uh, other than my... There room. are ta- uh, sconces for torches, but the fuel for them is long gone, right? They're looking around the room, there probably wasn't even enough uh, enough in here to make a fire. Hmm. I can't believe they put them on a spike. That seems mean. I'm going to just... I, this probably won't work, but I'm going to try talking to the head, and I say, where are the levers? It repeats the, the, the sentence again, uh, and as, as you kind of speak to it, it says, pumps the pipes, close the levee, flush the sewage, open the gates. If it's the wrong order, it'll be very bad. 
No, this is a dull conversation. But we know we. I, I think we've got the order right. He seems to be in charge. When we run into the. Pull the copper, flip the brass. Don't pull the iron lever last. So what's the order? Uh, once we f- see what we're looking at, I'm sure we'll. Okay. Let's remember the rhyme, the no. ryth- the rhythmic rhyme. Nothing in that bedroom. Uh, yeah, I had to check the beds. Looking underneath one of the beds, uh, the one the one bed has um a small purse of about sixty gold pieces, and a few personal items and a few bits of of clothing. Um, eighty five plus sixty. That's been a haul so, so far. Twenty eight for the other one each, plus twenty here. So okay. we've got forty eight each so far. Plus, um, it's just some like random tinker. Mm-hmm. They remember some of her math lessons from when she was <laughs> at the palace. <laughs> okay. I don't think there's much else happening in here, but uh, keep your eyes out for some levers. Yeah. I have a feeling it might have to do with potentially the other door. Yeah, the uh, the door, the like waterway. Yeah. Although I don't know if we need to go back there with the no, rat no, princes, no. but could be useful for later. Yeah, definitely. Should we bring the head? Well. I mean, if he's going to be yelling out yeah, okay. from our we bag, to be quiet. We, yeah, we don't want to attract, I don't know, uh, scary lights with eyes and whatever the rat Laser prince. head. Laser thing. head eye monster. Man. Slicer. Yeah, let's avoid thing. that. Okay. Uh, I'm going to head back towards the main hallway with Veo okay. and the Rat Prince. Put me up there with the Rat Prince. So, um, all right, Prince, lead the way. Do you want to shift it? I'll just tilt the camera down a little bit. There we go. Perfect. So, past the iron gate is a large room with a singular table in the center. In this room are three large um, bastions of machinery with many mechanical wheels, whirring chains, uh, and and great gears. Um, If you had to guess, you might be right above the gate that you saw earlier in this room. Mm. Because on the opposite side of the room are three levers. One of brass, one of copper, and one of iron. Well, that answers that question pretty, it, pretty quickly. On the <laughs> opposite end of the room, <laughs> there is another uh, barred portcullis style gate that is open. And the rat prince gestures to you and says, Come to come. Nothing but machine men minds in this room. We go forward. We go forward. Yes, yes, yes. But we have so many clues. But we have like a puzzle. I love puzzles. <laughs> Ghosts are strange. <laughs> <laughs> uh, there's nothing else in the room, right? There's no thing people any bodies? there's several barrels um of tools um uh and what look like perhaps replacement parts for the bits of machinery in here a few ladders and other assorted pieces of equipment yes i'm gonna double back i go one second mm-hmm. and i'm gonna go grab the head <laughs> on the stick and i'm gonna put it in the other room <laughs> okay <laughs> He continues to to rant and ra- rave away. There. So now we have we know we're getting our instructions from the boss. <laughs> <laughs> He's like our supervisor. <laughs> All right, you're back home. You're exactly where you want to be. What do we do, chief? Flip the copper, pull the brass. Don't pull the iron lever last. Is it pull pull copper flip, flip the brass? Copper, pull the brass. No, I had pull copper flip brass. Don't pull the iron lever last. So um, 
are all three of the switches the same? Do they all function the same? They're all set into the wall in different places. There's no other functions that are marked aside from the material that the levers are made of. Are they in a certain order? Um, uh, yes. The, uh, the order that they are uh, built in um, is the iron lever, the brass lever, then the copper lever. So copper. I want to investigate the iron lever. Mm-hmm. Uh, in which way does it appear to move? All of them appear to pull down. Right. And they're all in like their current position. Are yeah, they all they're, up? they're all up. And they all are that kind of lever that is on like a a gear and then has the two, the yoke and then the center le- lever. Yeah. Okay. Mm. So copper is the brass. So iron can't be third. We know that. Mm-hmm. Uh, but the you, other two are just generic instructions. So now flip and pull are two different motions. Yeah. So my guess might be that flip sh- needs to stay up. Yeah. So okay, I I ask the head again. Is it flip the copper, pull the brass, or is it pull the copper, flip the brass? Don't pull the iron lever last. What uh. Are they all in the same direction? They are. They are all up, and they all appear to go in one direction, which is down. So my guess is, we pull the iron. Yeah. Pull the, pull the copper. Leave ignore the brass. The brass. That sounds. That sounds reasonable. To reasonable me. to me. Um, I will take. The, I'll take one of the levers. Which one do you want me to take? Uh, what I can do is uh, maybe I'll stand guard at the other entrance if you guys want to pull the levers. We don't have to pull them at the same time, though. No. You know what? Everybody stand back. I'm going to use Mage Hand. Ooh, nice. So yeah. uh, we all stand. I'm I'm also wary of these machines. So why don't we all just stand? I'm going to stand in the entrance. Way. Okay. Now on the opposite wall, is there uh, anything indicating... Other than these three, I see kind of a lever on the other side. Uh, that there's the lever here, here, and here. Okay. And then this is the iron portcullis that corners off, and it looks like there's a set of stairs going down. Okay. Where do you want to be? Closer to the door. <laughs> <laughs> oh, should I be away from you guys? <laughs> sure. <laughs> Okay, so which one, I'm pulling the iron first. Mm-hmm. So I cast Mage Hand, mm-hmm. and it floats over, and it grabs the iron lever, and it pulls it. As it pulls it, one of the machines whirs to life, and you see the you hear this pounding sound, and you hear what sounds like the um, the the sound of uh, rolling chains, um, and coming from far, far down the the distance, it sounds like another gate might have just shut somewhere. And then I pull the copper, right? Copper. (laughs) Yep. I pull the copper. (laughs) Okay. You hear the copper gate, and all of a sudden there's a loud crash, and you hear the sound of water flowing and rushing, Uh, but it sounds like it's rushing away from you. I have a question. Does the does the handle reset after he no, lets go? No. So they stay down. They stay down. Okay. I feel like we accomplished something here. Well, now where's your reference? Well, we'll have to see. I mean, yeah, if we go out that door, if we heard some sort of crash, like I'd be wanting to know, did it block our path going out? I think we may have just opened the path yeah. by letting and the you, water... The, you see that two of the three machines now are running. Oh, no. Maybe we had to turn the brass on then off again. Hmm. You haven't touched the brass at all. Yeah, because I'm wondering if maybe we were supposed to engage it first and then put it up. Like, almost like, like maybe it... 
you can get, you know turn it on and off. Do you want That's me to try it, or do you feel like I don't know? But we shouldn't do it now, or we should reset everything and try again. I, s- I say we, I say we move forward. Yeah. I don't know the f- the the use of the word pull and flip. There's a difference there. There's something. It can't just be as simple as pull the levers. Wrong lever. <laughs> um, w- which one did you do second? The water one. I did copper, what? yeah, and that released the water. What if you put the copper one back up? I'm nervous. <laughs> um, <laughs> is that? It, would you like me to try? I'd like to at least go out the door and see if oh, yeah. we've potentially been blocked. Yeah, let's, let's, yeah, let's, let's go see peek. what's past the door. Okay, go you look past the door, and you turn around the stairs, and the stairs lead down into dark brackish water and the rat prince says yes yes this is the way we must swim now yes is it normally this full of water oh yes 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 it's flooded it's flooded this is the other side of the gate oh i think we should try this again because i think we can get rid of the water i pull the brass there's a crash and you hear the sound of the gate rising and all of a sudden the water begins to flow out and with a torrential crashing sound the water crashes out the drain and drains away from the steps revealing a clean passageway down Woo! yeah nailed it <laughs> hopefully Cha-ching! hopefully and that is where we will end things for the night oh. <laughs> <laughs> ghost ghost moves <laughs> ghost busters oh. I didn't even realize what time it was. I know, same. Ah, oh. yay! We well done, the well riddle. done. We solved the puzzle. So, uh, we're gonna wrap up for the evening here. Uh, we will pick up right where we left off next week, uh, Tuesday, eight p.m. Eastern time for six. more dungeons. Uh, six p.m. Six p.m. Eastern time. Six. Why did I say eight p.m.? I don't, I don't know. I don't know. Mm-hmm. Six p.m. Eastern time. Um. A big thank you to our cast, uh, Kelly, Jill, uh, and Joe, uh, and as well as Clayton and Kyle, who work behind the scenes to manage the stream and keep things running. Uh, If you enjoyed the stream and want to help support our work, you can check out our Patreon. You can find it by following the links below or at patreon.com slash dungeon underscore dudes. And a big thank you uh, for our new subscribers and everyone that cheered us on uh, through the, through this episode. We really appreciate it. It really helps us keep the uh, keep the lights on quite literally uh, on this on the stream. And we, we really love your uh, your help and support. So thank you so much from the bottom of our hearts. Um, if you uh, if you don't know already, uh, Kelly and I also post new videos every week. Uh, on Thursdays on our YouTube channel where we cover everything Dungeons and Dragons, including advice for dungeon masters and guides for players. You'll also find prior episodes from this campaign available for your viewing pleasure there. I think this week we have our episode dropping on zombies in Dungeons and Dragons. Mm. So uh, that should be a fun one if you're planning uh, a post Halloween adventure. Uh, You should also check out our latest video that's already up now on horror in Dungeons and Dragons for my playbook on uh, for my and Kelly's playbook on how to run horror elements in your game. Tonight's game session featured music by Tabletop Audio, as per usual. And the narration from the introduction uh, was performed by 100 Years Boar. And our game accessories were generously provided by Axe and Shield. Uh, And you see before you uh, Terrain by Dwarven Forge, and we use miniatures by Hero Forge and WizKids. We've been collecting these for a very long time, and we're, we're, uh, we love to play with these really, really fun setups. Um, and finally, j- just so you, you know, uh, make sure that you do check out the, um, the, the fact that Wi- Wizards of the Coast and Adobe uh, have their contest uh, Summon the Terror of the Undermountain, uh, where you can create your own monster for a chance to win $5,000 and a trip to wi- meet the D&D development team and get the monster you make added to D&D, including a miniature. It sounds like a super sick contest, so you can go to summontheterror.com to check that out. We highly recommend it. We're going to be working on our entries ourselves because it sounds super, super exciting. Mm-hmm. That's cool. um, thank you all so much for watching us again in Drakenheim. And we will see you next week. Bye. Bye.